Since 1968, the Private Education Assistance Committee, or PEAC, trustee of the Fund for Assistance to Private Education, has been an effective partner of government and the private education sector in operationalizing the complementarity between private and public schools towards an integrated Philippine education system that will benefit the Filipino learners. In recognition of the valuable contribution of the private education sector to the country's development, the Fund for Assistance to Private Education, or FAPE, a permanent and irrevocable trust fund for the programs of assistance to private education, was established on November 5, 1968, through Executive Order 156, Series of 1968, which also constituted the PEAC. The PEAC is composed of the Secretary of the Department of Education as the ex-official chair and the representative each from the National Economic Development Authority, Catholic Educational Association of the Philippines, Philippine Association of Colleges and Universities, and Association of Christian Schools, Colleges and Universities. For the development of private education in the country, the PEAC fulfills its roles as funder, advocate, partner, and enabler. A national secretariat headed by an executive director implements the policies, programs, and initiatives of the PEAC for private education. The PEAC is also present in 16 regions through its regional secretariats. Presidents of credible private educational institutions and associations in the regions are invited by the PEAC to become regional program directors and to host the regional secretariats in their respective institutions. The regional program directors designate regional program coordinators for the day-to-day -day operations of the regional secretariats. To ensure the growth of FAPE and its other funds, the PEAC constituted an investment advisory group and has engaged external fund managers whose performance is reviewed regularly. The PEAC has also provided assistance to public policy development and advocacy initiatives that support the improvement and sustainability of the private education sector. It worked with the sector for the passage of a landmark piece of legislation that is anchored on the principle of complementarity in the Philippine education system, which the Philippine Constitution has long recognized. In 1989, Republic Act No. 6728, or the Government Assistance to Students and Teachers in Private Education, or GASPE, was legislated. GASPE, which was amended by Republic Act No. 8545 in 1998, institutionalized government assistance to private education in the country. The PEAC was involved in the development of the Education Service Contracting, or ESC, one of the programs identified by the GASPE law, from piloting a scheme which was a precursor to the ESC in 1982 to 1986, to implementing the ESC in 1986 to 1991, and from 1996 up to the present. Given the track record of the PEAC in program management, the Department of Education continues to contract the PEAC to co-implement the ESC, the in-service training or inset, and thereafter the Senior High School Voucher Program when Republic Act 10533 expanded the beneficiaries of DepEd's GASPIP program to learners in grades 11 and 12. The PEAC has the following responsibilities in the GASPEP program. Orientation for participating schools, certification of VSC schools, SHS voucher application, processing of billing statements, monitoring, resolving cases of schools with adverse findings, <coughs> regular meetings and consultations with stakeholders, research and data gathering, and in-service training for junior high school and senior high school administrators and teachers. The Commission on Higher Education and UNIFAS Board also engaged the PEAC to co-implement the Tertiary Education Subsidy, or TES, program for private higher education institutions in academic year 2019 to 2020. The TES is one of the programs under Republic Act No. 10931, or the Universal Access to Quality Tertiary Education Act. The PEAC is accredited as a continuing professional development provider by the Professional Regulation Commission. Training programs designed and implemented by the PEAC have been awarded CPD credit units by the PRC, which participants can use for the renewal of their professional licenses. 
It also supports research that will help the private education sector improve educational delivery and its implementation of government subsidy programs at the school level. The efficiency of the PEAC to implement programs on a national scale is further strengthened with its development and management of systems to handle various processes, enterprise information system, information management system, voucher management system, online voucher application portal, certification system, program monitoring system, training and development system, and TES management system. The PEAC also implements its own programs for the private education sector. The assistance to programs and initiatives to reform education for private educational associations. The research for school improvement towards excellence for private school administrators and teachers writing their thesis and dissertation. The dissemination assistance to research and education for school administrators and faculty members who will present their papers in international conferences abroad. The Leading for Educational Achievement Program for private schools working on their areas for improvement towards PEAC certification. The Rethinking Education, Championing and Accelerating School Transformation for private schools making the transition to online learning. The Philippine Education Research Journal for decision makers, policy makers and practitioners in education and the Philippine Education Conference and the PEAC Educational Leadership Series, or LEADER, for school leaders and other training programs that address the needs of the sector. Recognizing the efficiency, diversity, and innovativeness of the private schools in achieving quality in Philippine education, the PEAC is committed to promoting private education as an integral part of our education system. Ladies and gentlemen, the Philippine National Anthem. Bayang magiliw, perlas ng silanganan, alam ng puso, sa dipdip mo'y buhay. Lupang hinirang, duyan ka ng magiting, sa manlulupig, di ka pasisihil. Sa dagat at bundok, sa simoy at sa langit mong bukaw, may dilag ang tula at awit sa paglayo minamahal. Ang kislap ng watawat mo'y tagumpay na nagliningning, ang bituin at araw niya kailan pa may di magdilim. Lupa ng araw na luwal, hati pagsinta, buhay ay langit sa piling mo. Aming ligaya na pag may mga api Ang pamatay ng dahil sa'yo The video that you just saw features musical artists Sarah Fakuri, Jeff Go, and Armand Perel. May I now ask Sister Fehra Diaz, RVM, to be followed and Mr. Rolly Mapandi for the opening prayers. May I request the Christians to join me in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our God, the Almighty, all-powerful, ever-living, loving, merciful, compassionate, and forgiving Father, all praise to you as we come to you grateful for the gift of life of persons, of time, and the opportunity to serve in the mission of educating and helping the formation of the youth entrusted to our care. We ask for forgiveness for the times that we have lost sight of the essence of this task and mission and have given priority to our own wants or needs. But thank you for keeping us to start another more challenging year with the same mission. While we acknowledge our unworthiness as your instruments, we humbly come together in your name to be oriented or refreshed or updated on the responsibilities we have to make sure we better understand the intricacies of our service to the children you have entrusted to our care. God, guide our facilitators, the team from the Private Education Assistance Committee 
who have been excellently serving us for many years, made their effort to give us the best they could to bring about a more prompt and reliable response from us who are beneficiary of the service they render. We ask that as we face the cha changing normal in the educational landscape, may you touch the hearts and minds of the government agencies in management that are responsible for the release of the subsidy that the students so deserve. May they be compassionate to assure the prompt payment to private schools under BARM, the needed subsidy. All this we pray as we thank you, O oh God, for the endless grace you so generously shower us with as we humbly strive to serve the greater good of the greater majority and for the greater honor and glory of your name. This we ask in the name of Jesus, who reigns with the Holy Spirit and with the intercession of Mary, our mother. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. May I request everybody to pray. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawmiddin, Iyya Kana Buduwa wa Iyya Kana Stain, Edina Sirat Al-Mustaqim, Sirat Al-Ladina Namta Alayhim, Gairil Mahdubi Alayhim, Walab Dualim. Rabbana Atina Fid Dunya Hasana, Wa Fil Akhirat Al-Hasana, Wa Kina Adabna. Rabbi Sidn Ilman Nafiyan, Wa Rizkan Tabiyan, Wa Amalan Mustabalan. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin. Amen, Ya Rabbil Alamin. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Fe and Mr. Goli. Good morning to everybody. This is the orientation webinar on the implementation of the ESC and TSS programs in school year 2022-2023. Most of our attendees today are representatives from the participating schools in BARM, but we also have participants coming from other regions. May we now welcome Sister Marisa Viri, RVM, President of the Catholic Educational Association of the Philippines and member of the Private Education Assistance Committee to give her opening remarks. Thank you, Denise. Ms. Rudora Angela Ferrer, PAC Executive Director, officials and representatives from BARM Ministry of, Ed Higher, of Basic Higher and Technical Education, Sister Maria Fe Herodias RVM, PAC Regional Program Director, Dr. Evelyn Doliete, PAC Regional Program Coordinator, Staff of the PEAC National Secretariat, school administrators, and all the participants in the 2022 orientation on the ESC and TSS programs for the participating schools in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. Good morning. Through education, we gain knowledge about our society and environment and develop the skills necessary to improve them. Additionally, education enables us to establish our perspectives in life, points of view, and ideas on many aspects of it. Thus, the highest priority should be placed on the quality and excellence of learning. To achieve full development and advancement, schools must produce high caliber graduates who will create nation building social and economic pillars. I believe that this is why the government partners with the private education sector to deliver secondary education through the GASPE program. Our government is confident that the quality of services will improve by leveraging private sector capacity and expertise. 
but not all private education institution qualifies as participants in the Education Service Contracting or ESC. A school to qualify must be accredited at least as level two by any member of the Federation of Accrediting Agencies of the Philippines or have passed the PAC certification program. Therefore, for qualified schools, let us not fall short of what the government expects from us, particularly the quality of service we provide to our clients. In today's program, ESC school certified in school year 2021-2022 will be given recognition. With this, we acknowledge that certification is undertaken to ensure that the school's educational programs comply with all DepEd standards, adhere to applicable DepEd policies, and meet the requirements of the self-study procedure prescribed by the PEAC National Secretariat ESC Certification Unit. We at PEAC hope that you will not only maintain your current status, but also strive to continually improve and eventually raise the bar of excellence in your respective schools. With the updates from the Department of Education Central Office, the PAC National Secretariat and the Program Implementation Guidelines for school year 2022-2023, you will know and update yourself on what you need to comply with as ESC participating schools. I encourage everyone to listen to the orientation attentively and participate actively in the discussions understanding clearly how the ESC and TSS programs are implemented. In the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic, we need to adapt our teaching and learning to new circumstances, considering the pandemic's economic and societal consequences, and more importantly, the learning loss brought about by the school closures to in-person learning. As our schools start to gradually reopen, we must plan and implement learning recovery programs to include a wide range of learning opportunities to turn learning loss into learning gains. Our shared duty is to advance education and keep, the next, and keep training the next generation of leaders. Thank you for your resilience and compassion over the past two years. We know it has not been easy, but you are doing your best. Let us remain steadfast in our task of delivering quality education. With this, everyone, I wish everyone a productive day. Once again, good morning. Thank you, Sister Marisa. At this point, I would like to acknowledge our partners from the Barn Ministry of Education, as well as our PEC Regional Secretariat in Region 12. May I request them to please open your videos to be recognized, and you may also, this is also an opportunity for you to greet our, uh, the attendees in our orientation today. First, I would like to acknowledge Ms. Evangeline Baseo, the Barn, Gaspe, and Private Schools Focal person. Morning. Morning, Kuman. Our regional program director, Sister Maria Ferre Diaz, RVM, the president of Notre Dame Educational Association. And our regional program coordinator, Dr. Evelyn Doliete. Thank you for um, thank you for being here with us. Let's now have a group picture. Bell, please give the cue. May I ask everybody to please open your video so those for those who are in the Zoom. Hello, good morning. May I, may I ask all the panelists to please open the cameras for the photo op? Um, this is mine in one, two, three. Another one, one, two, three. Thank you and good morning. Some reminders for our attendees. We will have the Q&A after all the presentations. 
So if you have a question, please type your questions in the Zoom Q&A panel. Please also provide the name and the name of your name and the name of your institution for documentation purposes. Because of the limited time for the Q&A, the most common questions will be answered live during the webinar. Please click the thumbs up icon if you have the same questions that other attendees have already posted. Please note that the webinar proceedings, uh, the webinar is being recorded for documentation purposes. The webinar recording and speaker's presentations will be uploaded to the PAC YouTube channel and website after all the orientation on the ASC and PSS. Our first speaker this morning is Presi Laba, the head of the Training and Development Unit, who will give the updates from the PEAC. Thank you, Denise. Good morning, everyone. I'll be presenting the updates from the PEAC on behalf of our Executive Director, Ms. Doris Ferrer. PAC was created under uh, the Executive Order 156 um, that was more than 50 years ago and uh, amended by Executive Order 150. And um, as stipulated in the, the Executive Order, uh, PAC is comprised of five members, which is chaired uh, by the, the Secretary of the Department of Ed Education. Also in the members are the NEDA Secretary, uh, the President of the three uh, private educational associations for uh, that CAP, PACU, and uh, AXCU. In the 1980s, um, PAC piloted the ESC program, which eventually um, uh, was implemented at, uh, as the national uh, uh, expanded pilot, uh, which became the, the, the gas below and um, was amended by the EGASPE. And then uh, with the enactment of the K-12 law, the, the GASP program, the, uh, the assistance to the private school was uh, expanded to the senior high school um, uh, students uh, because of the inclusion of um, senior high school in the K-12 curriculum. Uh, because of the, the changing uh, times, uh, continuing change, PAC revisited its uh, vision, mission, and core values. We had our strategic planning in 2021, and uh, we now articulate uh, this, uh, our vision and mission as follows. Uh, we want to uh, continue and uh, always be relevant and responsive to the needs of our stakeholders uh, our, uh, the, in the private education sector. And uh, PAC's mission is to uh, enable quality, sustainability, um, and innovation of the private education sector in support of uh, national development. Okay. With the, um, the, the success of the DESC program, uh, DepEd continued to contract PAC to implement the Senior High School Voucher Program, and uh, we would like to continue with that uh, level of um, accountability, integrity, uh, responsiveness, inclusiveness, and adaptability, which are our core values. Okay. This is our um, strategic uh, plan uh, for uh, three years, that's 2021 to 2024. Okay. For our strategic um, directions, we would like to strengthen our management um, program, uh, management rather, of our programs of assistance to uh, the private schools, we would like to uh, implement and provide capacity building for a uh, private school, especially those who are, um, uh, we consider as small mission schools, those who uh, need uh, the most help, uh, those who are struggling for uh, sustainability. But we would also like to address the, the needs of our, um, uh, the competitive schools in the country. Okay, we are, we are also doing research to, um, to uh, understand better uh, the private education sector and uh, its needs. We would also want to um, gain increased support uh, for uh, private education policies. For instance, we are uh, continuing the advocacy work um, to get government support to provide also assistance for our senior high school teachers like uh, the providing the, uh, the TSS or to extend the TSS. Um, not just in the ESC, but also to the senior high school uh, teachers. 
Okay. And uh, we are also um, looking at um, um, at an advocacy on also providing uh, possible assistance even to the elementary uh, school level. Okay. And uh, perhaps um, also uh, it's a continuing discussion on um, our advocacy to provide more assistance increase the financial assistance to our ESC participating schools. Uh, we do not want to um, the public schools to uh, be congested any further or um, we, we don't want uh, our public schools rather uh, to go back to that level wherein it's uh, decongested because that would not be an, um, an effective implementation or a framework for a public uh, private partnership. In the next few slides, uh, this will show you the performance highlights of PAC for school year 2021-2022. And we're happy to say that we are hitting very good numbers in our programs of assistance in the activities of PAC. We have uh, more than 180,000 of teacher engagement in the in-service training program also under the GASPE. Uh, I'll discuss more of the, the junior high school and senior high school in set uh, later. Okay, that's uh, more than 40,000 of teacher engagement, um, both in the junior high school and senior high school in set. We also had a very successful um, field ed conference. That's uh, last just last year, December 2021, and uh, we had very good and wide social media reach uh, because we are. Uh, live streamed in Facebook some of the, the sessions in the field ed conference. We also have uh, more than 40,000 teachers receiving the teacher salary subsidy or the, the TSS. Okay. We still have a very a good number of um, grantees uh, in the ESC and senior high school uh, <coughs> program. Okay. That's more than 2 million. And um, we are still able to serve. Uh, we are still able to serve more than four thousand schools in the implementation of uh, this uh, GASPE programs for uh, certification, uh, the orientation, processing of uh, billing statements, and uh, also in the the junior high school inset. Okay. However, there's been a decline in the enrollment of the. Uh, especially in the junior high school level and even in the senior high school um, level. Um, um, especially in the past two years uh, during the uh, COVID pandemic, uh, despite the uh, special provision of the Department of Education to uh, allow the ESC uh, schools to uh, recruit grantees in the higher um, levels, that's grades 8, 9, and 10. Okay. Um, that was uh, in the last two school years, but for this coming school year, 2022-2023, okay, that's still uh, we're still waiting for uh, the decision of uh, DepEd if that special provision will uh, continue to be allowed. We also have um, a lot of work done by the certification unit, and these are very good numbers for the schools that has been certified and are recertified. We've had more than 46% of uh, ESC schools being certified by uh, PEAC. That's um, um, for a total of 1,000, uh, more than 1,300 uh, ESC participating schools. And when we say certified, that means um, the schools achieve a final rating of three or four. Uh, those um, who are uh, able to comply or in substantial compliance, uh, partial compliance or limited compliance are still able to participate in the ESC program. And in this seven day ESC orientation, um, we are, are recognizing uh, that the schools who have been um, certified um, and recertified and um, uh, Later today, um, for the BARM schools, uh, the unit head of certification, Patrick, uh, will recognize these schools who have been certified or recertified in school year 2021, 2020-2021. Or, uh, sorry, that's 2021 to 2022. Okay. 
Okay, we also have a very wide reach, very good numbers for um, our social media pages, for Facebook, our website, and uh, a lot of YouTube uh, views for the videos that we uploaded and also a lot of uh, thousands of followers and subscribers some of you are um, uh, are following uh, our facebook page and uh, we even appreciate it especially uh, some of you uh, you already know the uh, the answers to some of the questions of those who are uh, commenting in the comment section of our facebook page and um, um, we appreciate it very much when uh, some of you and it's very good um, uh, that's uh, very very positive for for us okay that um, you're also responding to their queries uh, because some of you already know the answer since you've been following our uh, Facebook uh, our Facebook page okay we were able to process uh, more than 29 billion of subsidies for the um, ESC TSS and uh, senior high school voucher this is our um, uh, continuing commitment. It's our responsibility to uh, uh, that we are able to uh, accomplish um, what uh, has been uh, um, as contracted by DepEd to PAC. Okay, that we are able to um, process these uh, billing statements and implement these programs of assistance to the private schools. Um, we, this um, 29 billion more of the subsidies process also um, uh, mean that uh, we are enjoying a um, high utilization of the GASPE uh, budget, which is a positive both for DepEd and PAC. And aside from the, uh, the externally funded um, um, assistance, from the Department of Education, PAC also has its um, own internally funded programs, uh, such as the, the following, wherein we're able to um, uh, serve us, uh, private, school, private schools and um, private school uh, education, uh, educational associations okay, for their uh, programs, and also those teachers who um, would like to uh, who need assistance for their thesis, uh, their dissertation, those who would like to present their papers, um, or uh, schools who would like to improve themselves, um, uh, their their implementation of their operations, implementation of the, uh, the curriculum through the uh, the RECAS and the core program. Okay, this is the management team of uh, PAC, headed by uh, Ms. Doris Ferrer. Um, you've met uh, Denise earlier. Some of them will also be speaking later this morning. Um, that will be Rod, Patrick, and uh, Butch. And we'd also like to uh, acknowledge and uh, thank our regional program directors who are heading our regional secretariat. Okay, we're very thankful for their um, this voluntary service. Uh, leading the the regional secretariats, our uh, regional secretariat, and um, uh, helping us implement uh, the the programs under GASPE, and of course our regional program uh, coordinators who have been uh, very helpful and working, uh, working really hard uh, to help us. Um, they are, they are in uh, constant communication with uh, the schools, so we get a lot of um, help. A lot of support from our regional program coordinators and um, the regional program directors as well. Okay, the GASPE is the um, uh, under the GASPE program. Rather, um, this is our report for uh, GASPE for school year 2021, 2022. And uh, you're already familiar with that uh, DepEd is the institutional owner of. GASPE and PAC has been contracted by uh, uh, DepEd to co-implement uh, the GASPE program, and we have the following um, activities. And this is our, these are also our responsibilities in the GASPE program. We do orientation, well, which uh, we are doing now, certification, uh, senior high school voucher application. We process billing statements. We conduct in-service training. 
to also conduct monitoring and uh, the other uh, responsibilities as well of the PAAC under this program. I would also like to acknowledge and we are thankful to our DEP and regional directors in the various regions who have been um, uh, working closely with our regional secretariat and we're very thankful for the support of our DEP and regional directors um, not just to the GASWI program, but to the, the private schools in general. In August 2020, um, ADB conducted uh, a research which, is, uh, which was commissioned by DEPED, which is an assessment of the junior high school uh, ESC, the senior high school voucher, and the joint delivery voucher program for um, uh, that fall. Okay. And uh, the, the results of this assessment uh, were very positive for both PAC and DepEd. ADB says that uh, these programs are working reasonably well, uh, but can be adjusted to achieve stated objectives better. Okay. ADB also um, uh, reported that the logic behind the programs are uh, plausible, and that um, uh, this is not just about um, decongesting the public schools, but the programs also contribute to improving education outcomes. Uh, the programs promote the efficiency uh, of uh, the mixed public-private uh, national education system. Uh, the programs promote choice. We are empowering and enabling our students and parents. And uh, we are also promoting diversity of uh, providers. Uh, ADB also um, reported that the programs deliver on services provided, reach, targeting, and client satisfaction. So uh, we are executing, it means that we are executing uh, the, the programs according to uh, uh, its design, okay? And that uh, there's high beneficiary satisfaction across programs, um, though intended targeting of program appears to be working but may be eroding over time, particularly for ESC. So this is something that um, it's still up for discussion. We can uh, review and um, continue to uh, um, um, discuss so we can better uh, improve the implementation of the ESC program. Like, uh, for instance, is, is it still attractive for uh, some of those in the public schools? And um, is it um, is there really a need to extend this to um, uh, the the elementary level, or perhaps um, there may be a need to uh, increase the the subsidy for our uh, private um, school uh, junior high school and senior high school students? Okay. It was also mentioned in the report of ADB that more than half of ESC participating schools charge DOSF, that's uh, teacher and, uh, I'm sorry, tuition and other school fees below estimated GAA cost per student. So this means that uh, the programs are, are cost effective. These are cost effective for a DEP ed um, to implement these programs and contract PAC. Um, instead of um, DEP and perhaps building um, more schools for uh, more public schools for their uh, students. Okay, this is the, the data at the national level for the private elementary schools. As you can see, um, for the, the past three years, the, the enrollment in the elementary schools um, has been declining from uh, from 1.2 in 2019 2020 down to uh, just more than 700,000 in uh, 2022. We also have a, a declining trend uh, in the past three years um, for the junior high school, which um, um, may have also been caused by the, um, the pandemic or um, uh, perhaps like what I mentioned earlier. Um, <coughs> We may need to review the the assistance to the the private junior high school. Okay, if um, perhaps it's if is it still attractive to um, the the elementary um, students coming from the public schools? Is it still uh, encouraging them to um, to attend private junior high school instead? Okay. 
So these are um, actually ongoing discussions and um, ongoing advocacy work for PEAC to provide more support for our junior high school uh, private schools. Okay, for the senior high school uh, national data, okay, um, it's also decreasing. Um, uh, we've had uh, students transferring to the uh, from the private to the public schools, or perhaps there's not enough um, students from the pro pub, uh, public schools moving to the private schools. So it's um, really not about. Um, it's not really about a competition between the public and the private schools, but it's um, uh, we're, we need to look at uh, a framework, um, a better framework for uh, public-private um, complementarity. Okay. For the ESC uh, program, okay, these are still the uh, amounts of the ESC grants, and uh, the, the, the amount uh, varies depending on the location of the, the schools where the, the students are enrolled okay and for the ESC national uh, data there's also a declining uh, trend um, the number of grantees in the past three years um, has also uh, uh, decreased okay uh, however the the percentage as you can see is still stable at 85% uh, uh, this is because of uh, the lower base and uh, meaning we also have fewer um, junior high school students or ESC grantees um, enrolled in the private school as, um, uh, as compared to the total number of uh, uh, students in uh, the country. For certification, okay, these are the, um, the areas in the 2018 CHI. Uh, later, uh, Patrick, the certification unit head, will discuss more of this. Okay, um, this, are, this is a way for us, the, the 2018 CHI, the certification, um, that it's a very good instrument, the, the 2018 CHI. Uh, these are the areas which are um, identified or included rather in the, the 2018 CHI. And it's a very good instrument for a school to um, ensure quality, uh, uh, quality in the implementation of the curriculum and the operation, uh, the various operations of the school. And um, as we've mentioned, we are recognizing the, the schools who have been certified and recertified. And uh, this is also a way for us to uh, provide um, a proof of concept of the, the that this is an effective uh, use of the the instrument, um, the certification, a proof of concept that um, schools um, can be certified that um, it can be done. Okay. And these are the um, the the matrix that the 2018 CHI um, is using. Later, uh, Patrick will discuss more of this. Okay. We also have the teacher salary subsidy and uh, the number of the recipients for TSS also has uh, declined in the past three years, uh, primarily because of the decline also in the enrollment okay, in the junior high school, which has affected the, the loading of the teachers, of the junior high school teachers, okay? And we still are uh, continuing with our advocacy to increase the, the TSS for um, our um, junior high school teachers participating in this uh, program. So uh, we, we are pushing through with the, the, the 24,000 increase for the TSS and DepEd is very supportive of this. However, we, we still have um, uh, to consider the, the limited budget, we, we, which we hope um, eventually could uh, be improved for, um, for DepEd, okay? So we could um, uh, help more of our teachers in the uh, private junior high school and uh, hopefully also extend it to the, the senior high school uh, teachers. We are also conducting monitoring uh, monitoring activities, and um, we will continue with um, 
A random monitoring, however, we would like to inform um, everyone, uh, all the schools, that we will be conducting 100% post-billing audit of all CASPE grantees. So um, this means that we will um, check against the, the DepEd LIS, the, the data of the students that were uh, billed, both for ESC and uh, the senior high school voucher program. We, we want to make sure that um, the, the students who were billed are, are actually enrolled in the private schools and not in the uh, public schools. And um, that is because of our objective to ascertain the, the existence and identities of ESC grantees and senior high school voucher program uh, beneficiaries that uh, participating schools include in the billing statements they submit to the PAC and the Department of uh, Education. And this is our work plan for um, school year 2022-2023. Okay, we are um, uh, currently conducting the orientation conferences. This will be, uh, we have committed to this 14-day um, um, conference for ESC, TSS, and the Senior High School uh, Voucher Program. Hopefully um, next year we could uh, do this in person in the regions. Okay, so we could also um, uh, award and recognize especially those who, who have been um, certified and recertified in the ESC program. We're also uh, conducting orientation conferences for uh, Deb and School Division um, superintendents, okay? And these are the, the schedule for uh, Luzon, Visayas, and uh, Mindanao. We would like to uh, uh, continue to um, um, uh, not just introduce, but reintroduce um, the, the initiatives of BAC to our um, Deb and School Division superintendents. And uh, we were also conducting certification orientation um, every afternoon of the seven-day um, orientation conference. So this is for um, ESC participating schools due for recertification and revisits um, in school year 2022-2023. We'll have the, uh, the last run this afternoon okay, um, for, uh, for BARM. And, um, we want. Uh, we are doing this because we want the um, the ESC participating schools to to be ready to be more familiar uh, with the uh, the instrument or with the the 2018 CHI, and we want them to be prepared with their um, evidence of compliance in preparation for the, their recertification or revisit. Okay, please take note of these important dates for our certification activities. Okay, the, the submission period of the ESC requirements is, um, uh, as shown here, is uh, going until September 23rd. And uh, the application for the ESC program for uh, this uh, new school year um, uh, will start, uh, started in August 1st and will end on October 28th. We're also um, um, training our certifiers, we're training our monitors, um, also our registrars and um, even our um, regional program associates, which we've already uh, conducted. We also want our, the DepEd uh, personnel, the PMO, to uh, better navigate. Um, so we're also training them on the CASPA systems and admin panel. Okay. For our um, monitors, um, we'd like to specially mention that um, um, I'm sorry for um, <clears throat> for registrars rather and the IMS VMS point persons. Okay, I'd like to um, um, reiterate again uh, what was mentioned earlier that we are doing 100% post billing audit. So um, we just like to mention that if if in case um, your school uh, made an an honest mistake, like for, for instance over billing. Uh, please make sure you um, you inform the regional secretariat or national secretariat and retrieve um, your billing documents and uh, make the necessary corrections as soon as um, uh, you discover the honest mistake. But uh, of course, as much as possible, that's why we're training um, 
uh, our registrars and uh, these point persons in your schools because we want to avoid uh, those uh, mistakes. And uh, we are uh, very serious about um, integrity in this um, uh, billing documents um, when you submit it, uh, when you submit them and when we, uh, the PAC process these billing documents. Okay? For our certification readiness uh, uh, training, uh, this is open to um, all ESC participating schools and even to applicant schools. So uh, we want to, uh, this is free, and we would like to um, uh, make sure that you are <coughs> confident. We want to build the confidence of the schools in preparation for uh, their certification or recertification. Okay, we also um, have the, this schedule, um, the period for uh, the GASP billing and monitoring. Uh, billing and monitoring will be discussed uh, further in detail by uh, Rod, our uh, monitoring and processing unit head. Okay, so please take note of the billing period which uh, will start on September 1st and um, until December 15th, while for the TSS that will be next year starting on February until March and uh, the monitoring period will commence on uh, this um, on november rather november 7 until february next year okay we also are currently conducting the the in-service training for junior high school and uh, senior high school uh, teachers we are uh, as i speak we are currently conducting the eighth run next week uh, we will be conducting the, the the junior high school and the senior high school is in barm so uh, in case uh, there are still schools um, in BARM, uh, for those who are attending here, I, I hope you have registered, but in case you, have, you, you missed the, the registration, uh, do please send us an email so uh, you can still be allowed to register in other open runs. Okay? Uh, just check our um, website or just visit um, our Facebook page or register.pac.org.ph to get all the details and our registration is free, uh, free rather, okay? Uh, the INSET has been awarded 15 CPD credit units by uh, PRC, uh, historically in the online delivery and even in the, uh, the past, face-to-face -face delivery of the, the INSET, okay? We are offering uh, the following subjects in the INSET. There are 10 subjects in the junior high school and 12 in the senior high school. Um, however, we do have the advanced and regular track, so there are 15 classes in the, the junior high school inset. And in the, the, the 2022 inset, we have uh, doubled the slot allocation for each school, meaning um, your school may register a maximum of uh, 30 teachers for junior high school inset and a maximum of 24 teachers for the, the senior high school inset. We just like to um, uh, remind um, and uh, also kindly request uh, the school encoder or the point person in registering the, the teachers in our system to uh, please make sure that the email address of your teachers are, are correct and updated and to avoid typographical errors in the email address because uh, this is usually the cause why some teachers would not receive the, the Zoom link uh, for, the, for the inset. Okay? And um, also, we, <coughs> we also have internally funded um, research, okay? Um, we're happy to uh, announce that we are doing an impact evaluation of INSET. We've initiated this already, also process evaluation of the PAC certification and uh, the development of standards for various learning modalities. Okay, the, the 2018 CHI will be reviewed, so uh, we are going to um, uh, review the, the 2018 CHI uh, primarily. It needs, uh, it needs revision primarily because it was, when it was first designed, it was anchored on the uh, in-person or face-to-face -face modality, but uh, we now have um, several modalities, and that is why we also would like to develop standards for these various learning uh, modalities. For other uh, trainings and uh, conferences, uh, we're also uh, going to conduct uh, teachers versus fake just for a limited in-person grants. 
uh, the the first rollout was back in February and March. So the the limited in person was will be this September and October, and uh, that will be in um, in Baguio, Bacolod, Davao, and Manila. Uh, this course is especially designed for teachers to help them help their students fight disinformation and uh, historical denialism with our workshops on critical reading, critical thinking, and um, critical uh, feeling. Okay, we also have the PEAC Marshall Cavendish Teachers Academy, which is ongoing. There are four uh, course offerings here, which you can choose from. Okay, registration is still ongoing. And um, for the first uh, two courses, course one and two, uh, these are fully asynchronous and participants can uh, uh, may start the course anytime as soon as they uh, receive the access code. Access code. Uh, the first course was developed by uh, Nanyang Technological uh, University in Singapore, while the other three courses were developed by Marshall Cavendish Institute in Singapore. For courses three and four, um, these uh, two courses have at least one Zoom session. That's the only synchronous part. Um, but uh, the, for most of the part, it's still asynchronous. And for all courses, the teachers are given three months to uh, complete the course. Okay, we are also in partnership with Atene de Manila University for the implementation of Adaptive Design for Learning. It's a project-based and self-paced uh, professional certificate course. Uh, this was developed by the Atene Salt Institute and will be um, implementing the, the second run of ADL uh, from August to October of this year. Um, the ADL, um, by the way, the ADL uh, principles aim to uh, provide guidance for designers of asynchronous um, online learning, synchronous online learning, and hybrid learning environments. We will also be conducting the fourth run of ADEP, or Adaptive and Dynamic Ele Elementary Program Training in partnership with National Teachers College. Okay, this is especially um, intended for K-6 teachers and school leaders. There are four clusters in this uh, program. We have uh, the kindergarten group. Uh, next, we have the, the group for grades 1 to 6 teachers. And um, the, the third is for grades 4 to 6, grades 1 to 3 rather for the second group, grades 4 to 6 for the third. And the fourth will be for the um, uh, school leaders forum. Okay. The, the fourth run of this ADAPT program has three core considerations. First is um, on functional literacy and uh, numeracy. The second is on high flex uh, modality. And the third is on the, uh, the new curriculum. Okay. We'll also be conducting an in-service training for junior high school and senior high school administrators this October to December. That's the last quarter of this year. Okay, and we have the following programs for junior high school administrators and uh, senior high school administrators. For uh, the junior high school admin program, uh, this includes a discussion on uh, research-based strategies and um, interventions for learning, recovery, and acceleration, and uh, relating the use of these strategies with the new requirements of the, the revised junior high school curriculum. We're also excited to conduct a training on a K-6 internal quality assurance uh, that will be in the first quarter next year, okay, January to March 2023. And um, this is uh, uh, even without the, uh, the policy or mandate for um, certification of, uh, of uh, K-6, okay. Um, the use of the, the standards, the state standards as um, as uh, designed in this, uh, the instrument that will be used for the K-6 IQA. These are uh, state standards, and uh, as mentioned by, as stated by DepEd in uh, the DepEd Order 21, these standards will make the basic education system in the Philippines at par with international standards by ensuring that it is appropriate, responsive, and relevant to um, the learners. We have quality assurance through the certification uh, program for junior high school. Um, um, however, there is none yet for um, uh, for K to six and senior high school. However, the ad the adoption implementation at the elementary level, okay, would be an area of uh, concern if um, uh, this K to six schools 
and senior high schools are not uh, properly guided on the, the state standards for the implementation of the, the K-12 to, K to curriculum and uh, school operations. Okay, uh, That is why uh, there's a risk uh, of implementing programs that are not aligned with the K-12 standards or they may fall short of uh, K-12 standards and requirements. So this is a, um, we are, we have the K to six tool. It's called the senior, uh, the the standards based rather standards based quality assurance instrument for elementary schools, and um, we'd like to uh, train our K to six principals, school administrators on this. So um, you can um, help yourself how you can quality assure internally uh, your school operations. We will also be um, uh, doing voluntary um, certification for senior high school in the first quarter um, um, of 2023, um, meaning uh, even without the policy or mandate for senior high school uh, certification, okay, you can invite uh, PAC to uh, help your school. Uh, we, we have an instrument for the, the senior high school guy. Okay? to uh, quality assure uh, your, your school operations. Okay? So, um, so we have the following, following instruments for uh, the 2018 CHI, we have the senior high school CHI uh, in 2020, and we have already developed the, the instrument for um, also for the elementary schools. And um, uh, if your school is really aiming, is well-meaning, um, on its intention to improve continuously, uh, to really implement quality basic education, uh, th this is this instru instruments uh, will will help your schools, and we can build a culture of uh, quality assurance, um, especially for the private schools, um, which of course eventually um, uh, leads to uh, uh, national development. Okay. We also have our reports, um, other resources and publications um, at PAC. Okay. This is a very good work of the um, Communications and Research Unit of the PAC National Secretariat, the proofing, uh, future proofing private education. Uh, this, um, this is our strategic plan for 2021-2024. Uh, okay. um, the, 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 the sections in the report focus on the the, the changing context of uh, private education PAC, uh, triangulating our understanding of private education concerns and challenge, the role of PAC, uh, takeaways, and um, uh, thoughts from the strategic planning. We also have our online um, research journal. These are peer-reviewed. Um, these are op uh, with open access. These are open access journals. Okay, uh, we call it uh, a purge. Okay, if you need references for your thesis and uh, dissertation or implementation of your programs in your school, you may uh, visit uh, uh, the link here on uh, this site to uh, to access these um, online peer-reviewed uh, journals. Okay, the latest of which uh, latest article uh, we have a competences of uh, pre-service language teachers towards developing a language training program. Um, uh, by um, Dr. Joy, who's also one of our regional program uh, coordinators um, in CAR, and uh, uh, Dr. Felina Pasa, Panas SPK. Okay, so you may just visit um, our website for if you'd like to access these uh, purge publications. Okay, we also have uh, we also release. Uh, annually, and uh, we just uh, recently released uh, the annual report for the fiscal year 2020-21. It's uh, available on, on this site as shown here on your screen. Okay, so we we detailed here all the accomplishments of PAC in um, co-implementing externally funded programs, uh, specifically those under the GASPE, ESC, TSS Senior High School Voucher, uh, the INSET, um, even BBE and other programs of assistance, okay? We also uh, included here the, uh, the financial uh, report, uh, the audited financial report of PAC. So that's our, um, our responsibility of, for our accountability, okay? And showing our uh, integrity. 
of uh, managing uh, these programs. We also have um, uploaded, um, well, it's still existing, the learning modules. Um, we initiated this during the, the pandemic, okay? Uh, the, the LMR or Learning Module Repository. Your school um, can still access this um, as instructional materials for your uh, teachers and your, um, so that you can, um, will help you implement the K-12 curriculum, okay? Uh, we also have uploaded a webinar recordings um, in, in YouTube and uh, your school um, can use this um, either in the classroom or even for faculty or staff uh, development, okay? They all have public access anyway. They just, just visit our website and our YouTube um, uh, channel, okay? We're very happy and proud of, um, of this achievement. We had a successful ISO 9, uh, 9001 surveillance audit and uh, we're scheduled for a second um, ISO surveillance audit uh, next year. And uh, we would like to uh, ensure our stakeholders, uh, assure our stakeholders, um, especially in the private education sector, that uh, we are doing this to serve you better, that uh, we want you to know that we have a quality management system in place in the PAC National Secretariat. We are also seeking another ISO certification that's for 27001 and that's the information uh, security management system and uh, we will soon be preparing for this as well. So uh, we, we, want, we want our um, uh, stakeholders to know that um, we are serious about um, uh, doing things right in the PAC National Secretariat so we can um, better serve you. We would like to conduct soon a, uh, we hope to conduct soon this dissemination forum. This is a, um, a, a framework for guiding the complementary roles of private and public educational institutions in the Philippines. This was commissioned by PACU and PAC and funded by uh, DepEd. Okay. Um, we can soon uh, share uh, the, the long-term perspective plan, a copy of, uh, of this as soon as we get permission um, from the Department of Education, um, we can share this with our RPDs, RPCs, and even our DepEd, uh, the DepEd uh, regional directors. So this uh, long-term perspective plan provides a clear vision of the direction and path uh, forward, um, how we can um, better uh, implement um, uh, better framework for uh, public-private uh, complementarity and um, partnership. Okay. This is the directory of the National Secretariat. This is available in our uh, Facebook page okay, or, and in our website as well. So um, we, we suggest that if you have uh, concerns or um, inquiries for your inquiries, you contact directly the unit, uh, the unit concerned uh, using this, uh, the email address or these mobile numbers. Okay. And this is the PAC National Secretariat um, continuing our commitment to, uh, to serve you better, to better address the needs of the private education sector. Um, okay, um, I'll, ha I'll end with this. Um, this is our, uh, your PAC National Secretariat. Okay, thank you everyone. We have a good day. Thank you, Presi. Through the years, the PAC has been a partner of the private education sector. Guided by our vision and mission, the PEC continues to work for long-term gains for the private schools in pursuit of an integrated Philippine education system, wherein public-private complementarity is optimized for the benefit of our learners. Here's the first part of the campaign, Developing Private Education Together. Please watch this video.
The PAC has supported mechanisms and implemented initiatives that improve access of learners to quality education. We will now recognize the AAC schools that were certified in school year 2021-2022. May I now call Patrick Del Rosario, of head of the certification unit. Thank you, Denise. Good morning, everyone. We are delighted to be here to recognize the hard work of ESC participating schools from Barn in the previous school year 2021-2022 for having gone through certification and meeting the minimum standards of DepEd and the K-12. Allow me to read the certificate's citation. This certifies that is granted certified status for having satisfactorily met the minimum standards and requirements for the junior high school program. The school has undergone recertification by the Private Education Assistance Committee for Education Service Contracting by the Department of Education for the GASPE program. Given this August 2022, Makati City, Philippines. This certification is valid until school year 2024-2025. Signed, Rodora Angela F. Ferrer, Executive Director. We would like to inform everybody that their respective certificates will be downloadable after today's orientation using their EIS accounts. After a successful certification season for school year 21-22, the following schools from BARM are PEAC certified. Uluan Technical Educational School of Life, Incorporated, Claret School of Maluso, Incorporated, Del Sur Wood Shepherd College, Incorporated, Easter Joy School of Learning, Incorporated, Gani El Abbi Colleges, Incorporated, Iben Tainia Foundation Academy, Incorporated. Notre Dame of Dulawan Incorporated, Notre Dame of Bongao Incorporated, Mahardika Institute of Technology Incorporated High School Department, Masiri Campo Abantas Memorial Education Center Incorporated, and Sulu College of Technology Incorporated. On behalf of our PA6 Executive Director, we would like to congratulate all of these schools for having done well in the recent certification. May we call on Sister Fe to give her congratulatory message. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Good morning again. On behalf of the PAC Regional Secretariat uh, of BARM, uh, I would like to gladly and gratefully congratulate the 11 schools, 11 schools, Rick, Patrick, no? six and five, 11 schools belonging to the jurisdiction of BARM for having been certified. Uh, it shows that you have really provided quality education. I hope that you two will sustain, sustain what you have started and what has been certified so that you can continue to be part of BEAC. Again, congratulations and good day. Thank you, Sister Fe. Once again, congratulations to our certified schools. For the implementation of the ESC and PSS programs this school year, we will now have the presentations of the implementing units of the PEAC National Secretariat. May I call back Patrick Del Rosario to talk about the certification program of the PEAC for ESC schools. Thanks again, uh, Denise. Allow me to uh, share my screen. Magandang umaga po sa ating mga kaibigan from BARM, of course. Uh, pleasant morning. We have in the, in our, as a part of our panelists, we have uh, Sister Fejero Diaz, our uh, Regional Program Director. We have Dr. Uh, Evelyn Doliete. Magandang umaga po. And of course, uh, Sir Rolly, Sir, uh, long time no see. Good to yeah, see you here. Good sure. to have you in the panel. So from the certification unit, 
I would like to uh, share with you our report or rather, uh, well, the, well, report for 21-22 and uh, our implementing guidelines on ESC participation for school year 2022-2023. Earlier, you heard uh, Prezi mention about the 1,376 schools. Uh, this is a record setting number because in uh, the history of certification, we would usually have about 700 to 800 schools undergoing certification activities for one school year. But this has uh, almost doubled in number for school year 21-22. And uh, definitely this uh, entailed a lot of work, which needed a lot of support from the regional secretariats and of course, from our uh, own units in the national secretariat. So we have our communications unit, we have our IT unit, our finance unit, and of course, the office of the executive director in making sure that uh, school year 21-22 had a successful certification season. Almost 63% of these 1,376 schools were last visited by PAC in school year 2017-2018, still using the old certification assessment instrument. The remaining 37% or so is across, uh, well, distributed across those that have undergone revisits and uh, applicant schools. You know, we are very uh, happy to share with you that despite the two year pandemic that we have had, we continue to have applicant schools. We continue to have these brave souls join us in the ESC. And uh, some of them have already participated by uh, school year 21-22 and uh, the others that have just recently become eligible after the 21-22 activities will be joining us or will be participating in the ESC by school year 22-23. So uh, the, the, the first time that 2018 CHI, junior high school CHI was rolled out was in 2018-2019 with applicant schools and by 2019-2020 all Schools, whether applicants or participating, started to use the 2018 CHI. And we will continue to do so uh, in using the 2018 CHI for our, for our school year 22-23 schools. For ERI certification, uh, these were schools. They're the last schools to have used the old CHI. No? And uh, it will be their first time to use the 2018 CHI. And maybe just a little refresher, we have nine areas for evaluation in the 2018 CHI, eight of which will have numerical ratings. These are areas B down to area I. For area A, our certification teams will only be checking if these have been fully implemented or not yet implemented. We're talking about the school's philosophy, vision, mission, goals, and objectives. So wala pong numerical ratings, so do not be surprised once you receive your final report na wala pong numerical rating for area A. Okay, so we'll continue. The rating scale will still be from 0 to 4. A rating of 4 for every standard. There are 120 standards, by the way, in the 2018 CHI. For every standard, a rating of 4 can be given if evidence of compliance with standard and enhancement or innovations are presented, while a rating of 3 will be given if evidence of compliance with the standard is presented, meaning your school is fully compliant as far as that standard is concerned, while a rating of 2 for partial evidence of compliance with the standard, a rating of 1 if there is no evidence of compliance with the standard that has been presented, but there is a clear plan of action to comply with the said standard. Paano kong malalaman to make clear plan of action? Our teams, our certifiers will be checking on your SSIP or your standards-based school improvement plan or your annual improvement plan or annual operation plan. So ganun po kahalaga that we write, no, we properly write our uh, improvement plans so that PAC can be guided that even if some standards you may not have complied yet, but you have a clear plan of action on how you will eventually 
uh, achieve compliance for that standard. The last one is a zero. Ayaw naman nating mangyari ito. No? If there's no evidence presented nor a clear plan of action. So wala na pong naipakitang evidence of compliance tapos nakalimutan pang isama sa improvement plan ng school. That's why it's so crucial no po, na bago tayo mag-undergo ng certification activity, we objectively uh, do a self-assessment. So we have our 2018 CAI in our EIS certification system. Doon nyo po makikita no, compliant na ba tayo o hindi. So you have the 2018 CAI user's guide to help you accomplish that as objectively as possible. For the overall final ratings, we have full compliance with innovations for a final rating of four in all core areas and three or higher in the support areas. Full compliance is reached with a final rating of three in all core areas and two or higher in the support areas. So far, I have given you two types of final ratings. And if you would notice, laging may nakahabol po na rating that is needed or required in the support areas. So you don't just focus on the core areas. No? Importante rin po yung support. Kaya nga part siya ng ating 2018 high. A final rating of two can either be substantial compliance or partial compliance. How do these two differ? In the case of substantial compliance, Konting-konti na lang, certified status na or a rating of 3. So paano po? Final rating of 2 with 3 or higher in at least 2 core areas and 2 or higher in the support areas for substantial compliance. For partial compliance naman po, all core areas are rated 2 and the support areas should have at least a rating of 2 as well. Limited compliance would be a final rating of 1 with 2 or higher in at least 2 core areas and 1 or higher in the support areas. So tandaan po natin, limited compliance, final rating may be 1, but there are 2 core areas with 2 or higher as their ratings. A failed final rating would be a rating of 1, flat 1, ibig sabihin wala po talagang 2s or 3s. Or a final rating of zero. Uh, I would like to encourage you to uh, review the 2018 CAI decision rule para mas lalo pong mapalalim yung pag-intindi natin on our 2018 CAI overall final ratings. For our ESC implementing guidelines for continued participation in school year 2022-2023, our guidelines have been so school friendly. What do we mean by this? Earlier, we publicly recognized our schools that are PEAC certified, meaning they have shown full compliance with the standards of DEPED and K-12. However, even if a school did not reach this level yet, let's say uh, they manifested limited compliance, substantial compliance, or partial compliance, all of them are still eligible. but True to our mission in making sure that our schools would meet the standards, revisits will have to be done. Okay, So allow me to go to the next slide and explain to you how we do revisits and how one would differ from the other. Emphasis on the word area. It could be an area certification or area recertification revisit. When will these revisits take place? An area revisit shall be on the first or immediate year after the last for those with limited compliance on core and support areas rated one. Let me give you an example. If you are a school that will undergo a certification activity this school year 22-23, and after that, your final rating is limited compliance, Therefore, your area revisit will be by school year 23-24. Which areas will be evaluated or revisited? Definitely not all nine areas. Ang titingnan lang po ng aming team would be areas that are rated 
One, it doesn't matter whether it's a core area or a support area, as long as one po yung rating, yun yung i-revisit -re natin. If ever you have areas that are rated two or three, no need to rush and present to us your actions as far as the recommendations for these areas are concerned. Dahil hindi pa naman po namin titingnan. However, don't get me wrong. Even if these are not yet for revisit, of course, you are expected to address the recommendations depending on your context, depending on the uh, ability of the school to address such recommendations. Hindi naman po nag-recommend kami ngayon and then we expect everything to be uh, addressed by the following school year. Hindi naman po ganon. Let me go to the next one. An area revisit shall be on the second year after the last for those with partial compliance for core areas rated below three. So, kanina po, nabanggit ko yung partial compliance. Ibig sabihin, all core areas are rated two and in the support areas, at least rating of two then for all of these areas. Now, pag ni-revisit ka pala at partial compliance ka, ang titingnan lang ng certification team are those areas rated below three. Core areas rated below three. Lastly, an area revisit shall be on the third year after the last for those with substantial compliance and we will be checking on core areas rated below three. That being the case, it could be uh, a situation where in only one core area will be revisited or a maximum of two core areas. Take note, ito pong sinasabi kong one core area or a maximum of two core areas for revisit pang substantial compliance lang po. What is a retained certification or recertification status? This is uh, a status when a school after a revisit does not show any marked improvements. No? Wala pong nakitang improvements. So what will be done if this happens? PAC believes, of course, in giving schools more chances to prove that they can address these recommendations and gradually meet the standards. A second area revisit will be done. And if for some reason there still is no marked improvement manifested, a full and complete revisit will be conducted on the immediate year following the last. Should the school fail to improve its certification or recertification status after the complete or after these revisits, the school reverts to the lower status corresponding to its last revisit rating. So what are we trying to um, emphasize as far as this guideline is concerned? What we're saying here is that the, making sure that our schools participate in the ESC get to um, meet the standards as soon as possible. Hindi man po sabay-sabay na lahat ay ma-address, pero we want to see improvement. We want to see continuous improvement. We want to see schools pouring in effort. Kasi kung tatandaan po natin, we are receiving subsidy from the government. So we want to make sure that these resources are put to good use. So what would be the implications of a retained status on school eligibility as well as their ESC grantees? The school can still participate, but conditionally. What does that mean? There will be no grade seven slots and additional slots until there is improvement after the full and complete revisit is done. Ano po? So, yun yung gusto natin makita, that schools improve every time we revisit them. How about a failed certification or recertification status? This happens when the overall final rating is one, like what I mentioned earlier, or a zero. When does this happen? After an area revisit. Pag nag zero ka or flat one, we will immediately do a full and complete revisit on the following year. 
Okay? What would be the implications? Of course, we have no choice uh, but to terminate the school from the ESC immediate year following that revisit with no grade 7 slots. Grade 8 to 10 grantees, of course, shall still be allowed to continue and finish their junior high school program. Before the pandemic, we used to have a term failure of visit or FOV. But since two years ago, when we started doing online certification activities, we, we now refer to them as FOA or failure of activity. May it be certification or recertification or revisit. This happens when the activity did not proceed as scheduled without prior notice from the school or more importantly, approval from the PAC executive director. The school submits a letter of information on the failure of activity and upon deliberation on the case, a certification or recertification revisit may be scheduled the following school year. A second FOA means a failed status for the school. And in the previous slide, we have already discussed the implications of a failed status. So in our guidelines, implementing guidelines for continued participation, we have our certified schools rating three or four, or maybe a final rating of three with two core areas having ratings of fours as well. However, sabi nga natin kanina, sobrang school friendly that even if your school manifests um, substantial, partial, or limited compliance, you are still allowed to participate provided that you will be undergoing area revisit. So incentive po natin for certified uh, schools would be recognition. They are publicly acknowledged during our annual GASP orientation assemblies. May it be online like what we're having this morning or fingers crossed by 2023, we get to do um, recognition in person. No? So personal na po namin kayong congratulate when we do regional assemblies. So as we prepare for school year 22-23, we have August 20, 27, and September 3 as our online trainings for our seniors, juniors, and new certifiers respectively. We have our PAC Certification Readiness Training or PAC CERT. This used to be a, a program in school year 2019-2020 where in PAC would visit your, your region if you invite us to hold the said training program. But this time, we have decided to lay down the dates already. We have August 26, 29, 31, September 2, and September 5. As your choices as to which of these one-day online training, free training, you will be attending. Hindi po ito requirement at wala pong exclusive dates dedicated to certain regions. Open to all regions, lahat po ng dates. Um, what we're after is your ability to attend. Hindi nga siya required, but we assure you that this one-day training will uh, equip you even further in making sure that you navigate successfully your upcoming certification activity for school year 22-23. We have these pertinent dates posted in our PAC website uh, probably weeks ago or more than a month ago. Uh, these are school year 22-23 certification uh, dates. Remember, for our schools undergoing e-recertification, the submission of your parts one and two documents uh, would be from August 1, that's uh, last Monday, up to September 23, 2022. While for our schools undergoing revisit a bit later, by November 7 until January 6, 2023, and if ever we have applicant schools this morning or kung may kakilala po kayo na nagbabalak mag-apply sa ESC, please tell them that ESC applications opened last Monday and will end 11.59 p.m. of October 28, 2022. For all the types of certification activities, your part three documents or the submission of your ECEs, wag po kayo magpapadala ng hard copies sa office namin 
at wag din po kayong individually mag-email sa aming uh, email accounts. Uh, we will be asking you for your Google Drive link one month before your scheduled activity. Bakit po one month before? Because we want to make sure that we get to forward these links for your documents to our certifiers so that they would have ample time in evaluating the compliance of these documents to the standards even before the day of the activity comes. So it's a win-win situation for everybody as long as we observe these deadlines. Now, allow me to uh, give a reminder on our part one documents. Internally in the PAC, we refer to these as the big documents. Ano ano po ba itong part one documents? These are your government recognition for your junior high school program or basic education program, your audited financial statement or AFS, your GIS or general information sheet, and your SEC certificate. So uh, we would like to remind, remind everybody na magkaiba po ang government permit at government recognition. For the ESC, kailangan po ang maipakita natin ay government recognition or DepEd recognition. I would like to encourage you to visit our certification webpage in the PAC website so that you will see the details pertaining to these part one documents para hindi po tayo uh, back and forth emailing each other if ever ma ma reflect po na meron kayong non-compliance sa part one documents. For FAAP accredited schools, you will remain exempted from PAC certification or recertification provided your accreditation remains valid. Well, accreditation for your, your basic education program. For those of us who may not be familiar yet as to which uh, these agencies are, FAAP accredited agencies are the following. We have PAASCU, PACOCOA, and AXCU ACI. For school year 22-23, we will be doing hybrid protocols for our certification activities. Hybrid because some activities will be done online while some will be in person. Recertification and revisits will remain online just like what we have done in the past two school years. For our applicant schools, since we have not met you yet, we will be visiting you in person. Rest assured that our certification teams will be observing minimum health standards. The same documents will be submitted whether your activity is online or in person. However, for our applicant schools, they will have the opportunity to physically exhibit their upload, uh, uploaded documents or even documents which they may not have uploaded, but they are generous enough to share so that they can really give us the big picture of their schools. True to our strategic directions, we are holding or conducting orientations for non-ESC and non-accredited schools. We have a little over 3,500 schools in the ESC current, and there's about 1,500 more private junior high school providers that we would like to reach. Last year, we were uh, we got to reach about 500 of them, so we are targeting about 1,000 more to be reached by. August 24 and November 24 runs of this orientation. Let me just clarify that the one-day orientations for these schools, uh, it's not to have them commit to apply to the ESC. Hindi po. Our objective is to uh, inculcate in them a culture of internal quality assurance. Kahit wala pa po sila sa ESC, magkaroon sila ng culture of doing IQA or internal quality assurance. And I'd like to close by sharing with you our contact details. We have two mobile numbers. And uh, if ever you have queries or concerns uh, that you would like to send us via email, our email address is there. And the certification webpage that I mentioned a while ago is here uh, as well so that you will be uh, kept abreast if there will be updates. So from the certification unit, I am uh, Patrick Del Rosario. Magandang umaga po, and it's glad to have you here with us this morning. Thank you.
Thank you, Patrick. May now call Rod Malonzo, head of the monitoring processing unit, to talk about the processing of billing documents and monitoring of participating schools. Um, thank you, thank you, Denise. Good morning to all of our participants and all of our um, guests, um, most especially our regional program coordinator and regional program director, uh, Sister Fe and Dr. Doliate, and of course, Sir Rolly Mapandi no, of Jamiatu Philippine Islamia. Um, good morning po sa inyong lahat. And Ms. Vanji from uh, TEPED MH, uh, sorry, MHBTE in Barm. Uh, I'll be presenting um, the uh, ESC and TSS guidelines for school year 22-23. Uh, allow me to share my slides first. Okay. Uh, for, for most of you that have been attending our orientation um, conferences in the past two school years or three school years, um, a lot of the provisions that I'll be presenting to you right now uh, are familiar to you already, but uh, we'll focus more on um, more on the provisions in the guidelines that are important, especially in the creation of your ESC and TSS billing statements. Okay, so I'll start with the requirements for continued participation in the ESC and TSS programs. First is the school must attend the orientation and the ESC and TSS programs. This is a requirement before a school can create their billing statements in the program. So if, you, if uh, schools fail to attend, they won't be able to create their billing statements until they submit an explanation letter to the National Secretariat. And the explanation letter is submitted through, our, through the IMS, uh, ESC Information Management System, you know, where the schools are required to upload a copy of their um, explanation letter. Uh, the next requirement is for the school also to create a school committee. And the members of the school committee are as follows. The school head, parents association president or representative, faculty association president or representative. And the responsibilities of the school committee are as follows. Uh, they prepare the profile of the ESC applicants and accepted grantees. They also establish the selection process in the participating junior high school especially if the enrollees uh, in grade seven exceed their slot allocation. So they have to rank all of their enrollees you know, uh, to be included in the ESC program. And also the most important is to sign the, uh, the school committee signs the ESC billing statements and supporting documents required by the GASP, by the ESC program and TSS as well. Okay. Another is to open and maintain a land bank of Philippines account. This, uh, uh, your account in land bank is used for payments, you know, uh, for ESC and TSS payments. And the account name must be under the name of the school. Um, if the account name is under the name of a person, then we will put on hold your documents until you're able to comply with the correct account name, which should be under the name of the school. Um, also, another responsibility of the school is to orient the ESC grantees and ESS recipients on the guidelines of the program, because this is an opportunity for the school to present provisions and the important, uh, yeah, the important provisions and the guidelines, uh, uh, such as the the amount of subsidy provided by government uh, for ESC grantees, you know, and uh, also to present to them how much are they still supposed to pay? Because we all know for most of our schools participate in the program, the subsidy is just a portion of the total school fees charged to the student. So this is an opportunity for you to explain it to them you know, that this is the amount of subsidy and this is the school fees. And the difference is what, you're, what the parents are supposed to pay to the school. Also, the TSS recipients, you know, explain to them how the TSS works, how much the subsidies per, how much the subsidy per teacher or per qualified teacher, you no. Know? And also, uh, apart from the orient, uh, to 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 show proof that you've conducted or the orientation, you have to retain a copy of the orientation program and the orientation attendance sheet. Now, these documents are monitored, are checked during the monitoring activity, so you will be required to submit or present to the monitoring team 
a copy of the orientation program and orientation attendance sheet. Now, you are also required to prepare the ESC grantee folder. And the ESC grantee folder is for you, your new grade seven ESC grantees. Not all, uh, it, um, you don't have to create a new folder, a grantee folder for your uh, continuing grantees. No, these are just for new ESC grantees, new grade seven ESC grantees. And the grantee folder contains the following documents, the application form, photocopy of ESA certified birth certificate, a photocopy of grade six report card, two by two photo of the ESC grantee and proof of income. And the last requirement is for the school to undergo ESC certification. Now, as soon as you get certified, uh, there is an uh, sort of an expiration date, the certification, and during that school year, now you have to be recertified so that you can continue to participate in the program in the succeeding school years. Also, if you fail to submit any certification documents, a PAC may compel to put on hold all billing statements until the school submits or complete the recertification documents. Now, for slot, alloc for slot allocations for school year 2022-2023, uh, let's talk about fixed slots first. If you are a new ESC participant in junior high school, you get 50 fixed slots in grade seven. If you are an old ESC participating in junior high school, your fixed slots in school year 22-23 is your total build grade seven ESC grantees in school year 21-22 or your fixed slot allocation in school year 21-22, whichever is higher. So I'll give an example. If your fixed slot allocation, I'm talking about fixed slots only, this does not include incentive and additional slot allocations in school year 21-22. So if your fixed lot allocation in school year 21-22 is 100, and you were only able to build 75 ESC grantees in grade seven in school year 21-22, then, 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 then your fixed lot allocation for school year 22-23 is 100. So always the higher amount, uh, the higher uh, uh, total, okay? Now for incentive slot allocations for schools that had an ESC certification rating of four in the 2018 guide, they get 30 slots, 30 incentive slots. This is over and above your fixed slot allocations. If you, if you have an ESC certification rating of 3.00 or higher in the old guide, I'm talking about schools that were, that were um, uh, certified prior to I think school year 2018 or 2019, you know, 2020, then they get 30 incentive slot allocations. Before I proceed to the accredited you know, incentive slot allocations for accredited schools, you know, I'd like to um, uh, emphasize the difference between the first two bullets. You know. Again, if your ESC certification rating is three, you know, three, a whole number in the 2018 CAI, you do not get any incentive slots for school year 22 23. Okay. But if your rating is 3.00, you may decimal point no? or higher in the old CAI, you get 30 incentive slot allocations. So your incentive slot allocation, if it's three, no, it will depend on when. On what certification instrument was used during your recertification or certification visit. Okay, moving to the accredited schools. You know, for FAAP level one accredited schools, uh, the incentive slot allocation is 30 slots. For FAAP level two and above, 60 incentive slots in grade seven. Now, for grantee participation, uh, um, those who are eligible to participate in the program must be an elementary graduate from a public or DEPED recognized elementary school, must be an incoming grade seven student, ALS, ANE, or PPP grade seven qualifiers are included you know, and, may, and, and are qualified to participate, has not been a recipient of the ESC in the previous school year, and a Filipino citizen. Now, for those schools that have OHSP or under the OHSP, uh, the uh, grantees must be of school age, 12 to 18 years old, time grade seven enrollment, 
and for and students, these are for students who are unable to attend the regular class program. Okay, for requirements, if you notice, the requirements here are the same as the documents found in the ESC grantee folder. It's the ESC application form, ESC certified for certificate, grade six report card, two by two photo of ESC applicant, proof of income. For amounts, no, it remains it, it it remains the same. Uh, for schools located in the National Capital Region, the grantees get 13,000 pesos. For, for schools located in highly urbanized cities outside of NCR, the grant is 11,000. And for all other locations, 9,000 pesos. The terms of the ESC grant, the grant covers four years of junior high school starting in grade seven. And the grant and the, and the grantee may continue to participate in the program provided that the grantee is promoted to the next grade level and enrolled in an ESC participate in junior high school. The grant is terminated if a grantee drops out for, for non-health reasons in the middle of the school year, does not re-enroll the following school year, fails to be promoted to the next grade level, dismissed or expelled by the school for disciplinary reasons, or transfers to a non-ESC participating junior high school. Now, uh, for, for school year 22-23, if you have ESC grantees who transferred to a public junior high school or a non-ESC non participate, a non-ESC private junior high school in school year 2020-2021 and 21-22, and wishes to transfer back to your school in school year 2023, they may be reinstated in the ESC program. This is provided for in Deped Order Number Two, Series of 2022. It allows the the reinstatement of ESC grantees to transfer to public schools in school year 2020, 2021, and 2122. Okay. Now, transfers to another ESC participating junior high school are allowed. You no. Know? Uh, if, for example, you are a new ESC participating junior high school, you only have slots in grade seven, and there is an ESC grantee coming from another ESC school who wishes to enroll and transfer to your school, that is allowed. So even if you're a new school, you no, know, uh, and you are only allotted slots in grade seven, you may accept transfer in ESC grantees coming from other ESC participating schools in the upper grade levels. And this in no way affects your slot allocation. This is not uh, your transfer in ESC grantees and upper grade levels. No, it does not get deducted from your grade seven allocations. Okay. Now in cases when the subsidy amount of the releasing school is different from that of the accepting school, the accepting school will be the lower of the two applicable subsidy amounts. So this means that if a grantee, for example, from Davao City transfers to a school in uh, Kidapawan City, no example, or sabi na natin sa bar, um, in in Holo, no, uh, the amount of subsidy in Davao is thirteen thousand, and the amount of subsidy in Holo is nine thousand. So if a grantee from Davao goes to Holo, then the subsidy is lowered to nine thousand. So the grantee will only get 9,000 pesos. Uh, if a grantee from Holo transfers to Davao City, no, then the, the grantee will only get um, 9,000, not the 13,000 in, in Davao City. Now for grantees that drop out due to death of a parent or guardian, force majeure, prolonged illness or accident, they may be reinstated in the ESC program, provided they submit, to, submit documents to support their claim. Now, this is also what we call a reinstated grantee, no? Same as yung sinabi ko na nag-transfer to public and then wishes to go back to an ESC participating school. Uh, um, the process for reinstatement is in the IMS. So just access the IMS, proceed to the service request facility in the IMS, and then upload, um, uh, encode the name of the grantee you'd like to reinstate, and upload the supporting documents. Okay. Now for TSS, no, uh, teachers who are eligible must be 
PRC licensed teacher. A PRC licensed teacher teaching ESC grantees, teaching 180 minutes per week or one subject load in the ESC participating junior high school, regardless of subject and delivery mode. The grantee must be full-time employed, uh, sorry, the PSS recipient must be full-time employed in the junior high school. Now, each TSS recipient receives 1,500 pesos per month of service to, uh, to the ESC participating junior high school. The recipient receives the full subsidy of 18,000 if employed for at least 10 months or at the end of the school year. So I'll give you a computation, a sample computation. If a teacher stayed in your school for nine months, a TSS recipient, uh, then the recipient gets 13,500 pesos. Kasi hindi niya nakompleto yung 10 month na requirement or at the end of the school year. So if the, if the teacher stayed in your school for 10 months, so instead of getting 15,000, the teacher will receive the full subsidy of 18,000 pesos. Now for processing of ESC and PSS payments, no? all processing of ESC and PSS payments is done through the IMS and IMS TSS for, TSS pro for the TSS program. And the first step that you should do is to update your school profile after accessing the IMS. Because if you do not update, update your school profile, we will not be able to create a billing statement. The IMS will not allow you uh, to create a billing statement. Okay, so you have to update your school profile, your school fees, and your school fees, by the way, are very important because the basis for computing your billing statements you know, are, are are, is what you input uh, in the school fees tab in the IMS. Uh, also, you are required to, to encode your school committee members, your LBP account details, start and end of classes for the school year, and your school data. By the way, any mention of IMS no, in the creation of the billing statements, we also have a tutorial video in our YouTube channel, which, uh, which will present to you a more detailed uh, uh, process you know, on each of the processes that I've been that I will mention to you today. So after my presentation, I'll 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 I'll, I'll, I'll guide you how to access our YouTube channel and uh, view our uh, our tutorial videos for the IMS and IMS TSS. So, mas guided kayo doon, mas detailed yung press, yung pagkaka-present doon ng processes, and mas masusundan nyo po kung paano mag-create ng billing statements sa YouTube channel natin. The next step after, after updating your school profile is to encode your new grade 7 ESC grantees. There are two ways to encode your new grade 7 ESC grantees. First is the per grantee encoding. Uh, where you encode each of your grantee in the IMS. So if you have, for example, 50 ES grantees, then you have to encode them individually in the IMS. The other method is through bulk encoding, where you, where you download a CSV file in the IMS. And then the CSV file may be opened using MS Excel and, in, and, and, encode, and then encode all of your ES grantees in the file save it as CSV file as in CSV format and upload in the IMS. Next step, uh, if you are continuing school or if you've been participating, if you participate in the previous school year, then you're required to update the status of your previous school year's ESC grantees. Because only after dating your ESC grantees to pass and the status is enrolled in your current school, then that is the only time that the continuing grantee will be included in your billable ESC grantees in school year 22-23. Next step is if you have transferred in in the upper grade levels, you know, uh, and just encode the ESC student ID and the name of the, the, name of the uh, ESC grantee and the school where the grantee came from in the IMS as well. So after encoding it in the IMS, uh, uh, it will be listed that the transfer in grantee will be listed in your billable ESC grantees for the school year. So after um, after all of the those process that uh, after after 
uh, processing your transfer in ES Humanities, the next step is to upload the supporting documents. So you have three supporting documents to upload. First is the board resolution or secretary certificate on your on ESC and TSS bill statements and other supporting document signatories, your LBP STI-1 or IMI-1, and a copy of your official receipt. So these are the three documents that are required. You are, uh, schools are required to upload in the IMS before you will be allowed to eventually create a ESC billing statement. So in the creation of the ESC billing statement, the first step is to let, select the ESC grantees to be billed and to make sure that they have attended classes for at least 30 days after the opening of your of the school year in your school. Okay. And then after creating the billing statements, uh, the next step is to affix your signature on the following documents using the IMS East Electronic Signature Facility. ESC billing statement, schedule question, other and miscellaneous fees, and the attestation of ESC grantees for school year 22 23. Now, for the supporting documents, now how do you prepare these supporting documents? First is the board resolution. Uh, the board resolution or secretary certificate. Now, the board resolution or secretary certificate shows to us you know, uh, the authorized uh, representatives of the school when it comes to signing the billing statements you know, and the supporting documents. Now, uh, first is we need information on the school committee members. And the information the school committee members that we require are the school name, no, uh, sorry, uh, name of the name of the school committee member, the designation, the email address, and a sample signature. Now, the email address and sample signature we we verify it you now using the ESC admin panel, the IMS admin panel. So we check. If the billing, if the email address encoded in the IMS and the signature uploaded in the IMS you know, are the same uh, as what is found or what is in the board resolution or secretary certificate. So make sure that the email addresses are, for, are, are the same and the signatures also are the same. <laughs> For the signatories to the attestation of the ESC grantees, we require information on the school registrar and school president or school director or their representative. It's the same data set, no? the name of the school registrar or school president, designation in case there are representatives, uh, the email address, and the electronic uh, sample of signature specimen of the uh, two officials. Now, a template may be downloaded in the IMS, so you don't have to create a, 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 a create it by yourselves. You can download the template of the board resolution or secretary certificate in the IMS. And then have it signed, have it uh, encode all of the details, and, and then have it signed and notarized also, then scan and upload in the IMS. Now, for the school year 22 23, you, have to, you, you are required to submit a new board resolution or secretary certificate okay and do not forget to have it notarized the next supporting document is the SI1 or IMI1 this is a printout from Land Bank of the Philippines that indicates the account name and account number of the years to participate in junior high school the printout should be as of June 2022 has to be signed by the Land Bank of the Philippines branch manager and then you are required to scan and upload in the IMS. Now the date, no, you in June 22, it could it could be after June 2022, not before June 2022. Uh, the reason why we're requesting for a more recent uh, STI one or IMA one is to make sure that your LBP accounts are still uh, active because there are school schools that submit accounts that have closed. Uh, therefore, affecting the whole batch of uh, schools for payment uh, submitted by DepEd to Land Bank of the Philippines. No? So please make sure that your accounts are all active because it may it will cause delays if the if your bank account is already closed. 
Next is the official receipt for payments received in the previous school year. Uh, also required to scan and upload it in the IMS. Make sure that in the receipt from, you know, it should be Department of Education. Okay, received from the Department of Education. Also, make sure that there is official receipts no, are really ORs, no mens, uh, and printed by a, a printing press registered uh, with BIR. Next is the schedule of tuition and other mis other and miscellaneous fees. Now, the 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 document this document no, does not require any printing or manual signatures or manual signing. This document is uh, generated in the IMS and then attested by the school committee through the affixed electronic signature facility within the IMS. Okay. Also, the list of ESC grantees, the attestation. Uh, this is also an IMS generated list. You are not required to download a, a, a you're, you're not required to scan and upload a copy of your list of ESC grantees. This is generated in the IMS and attested by the school president or director or and the school registrar to the IMS a fixed electronic signature facility. Okay, now for TSS billing statements. Uh, the first step you know, after accessing the IMS for TSS is to encode your TSS recipients. Uh, your eligible license features or recent debt passers for certification of rating. And then upload the class schedule, upload the scanned copy of the PRC license or certificate of rating of the teacher. Also, the following supporting documents are required. The TSS payroll and the official receipt for TSS payments received in the previous school year. Now, after that, the system will allow you to create your TSS billing statement. And in creating the TSS billing statement, uh, you are required to select the number of months in service of the teacher or the TSS recipient. And then select the TSS recipients to be billed. And then the system will generate the TSS billing statement. And then list of TSS recipients in school year 2022-23. Um, this is a list of TSS recipient build. Also generate the system generates a PDF file of the TSS recipients building school year 2022-23. These two documents, the TSS building statement and list of TSS recipient build. Uh, the signing is through the affix, affix signature, affix e-signature facility in the IMS TSS. Okay. Now for supporting documents for the TSS billing statement, first is the TSS payroll for school year 21-22. Manual pa rin po ang TSS payroll natin, so you have to download a copy of the generated TSS payroll. It has to be signed by the TSS recipient. It could be manual or through e-signature. It has to be attested by the school committee. Manual and e-signatures are allowed. Then after that, scan and upload in the IMS TSS. Now, official receipt, also for TSS payments received in the previous school year, scan and upload in the IMS TSS. Now, the list of TSS recipients in school year 22-23 is uh, IMS TSS generated. Uh, it is attested by the school committee through the IMS TSS facility, uh, TSS affix e-signature facility. No scanning and uploading is required. Now for processing of payments from PAC to DepEd. So this is the process flow. If you, know, if you notice, there are four uh, offices or agencies that handle uh, your, your billing statements, the processing of your billing statements. The first uh, uh, office is the PAC Regional Secretariat. Uh, after creating your billing statement, you are required to submit uh, online the billing statements to the RS, and the RS processes your billing statements and supporting documents, check for accuracy, they check for, um, uh, for if, for example, the accounts indicated, account details indicated in your STL1 or RMA1 is the same as what is encoded in your billing statement. Then after, after checking, 
the PAC Regional Program Director or the or their authorized uh, uh, alternate signatories affix their electronic signature to the billing statement and the billing statement gets forwarded to the FEDRO or in your case, uh, in the Ministry on Higher Basic and Technical Education. Um, and then uh, MHBTE may check the billing statements and supporting documents because they have access to this as well online in our admin panel. After checking, they may, uh, the next step is to affix the electronic signature of the minister for, uh, for education of uh, BARM or the alternate signatory. And then it gets forwarded to the PA's National Secretariat. We conduct another round of checks and then uh, prepare your billing statements in batches. The, our executive director signs the billing statement to our e-signature facility as well. And then we forward all of your billing statements and batches to DEPED PMO. DEPED Program Management Office prepares your, uh, conducts another round of checking, then prepares the payroll and obligation request, and then submits it to Land Bank for the release of your um, ESC and TSS payments. Uh, to check your payments, uh, to check the status of payments, you may go online in the IMS, uh, and then the following are the status statuses that you will see. So if the billing statement is still in the region, it takes about one to two weeks uh, before it gets forwarded to the National Secretariat. And the National Secretariat processes, processes your billing statements for another one or two weeks and then forwards it to the Deputy Central Office. And once it's in the Deputy Central Office, it takes about four to six weeks before your payment is released. Now, for dates and deadlines uh, for the ESC program, the opening of the IMS is on September 1, 2022, and the billing period starts 30 days after opening of classes. So for example, if the junior high school opens on September 1, 2022, then the school can only build their ESC guarantees on September 31, 2022. The deadline for creating ESC billing statements in the IMS is on December 1, 2022, and we would like to emphasize on these deadlines uh, because uh, DEPED has been very strict. Uh, in the past school year, 21-22, DEPED has been strict on the deadlines. So uh, it would be very difficult for schools to request for access to the creation of billing statements in 22-23 if uh, it is requested after December 1, 2022. Okay, so please take note. Uh, all billing statements must be created by December 1. Um, otherwise, baka hindi na kayo makapag-create after, uh, after December 1, 2022. Uh, the deadline for submission of the ESC billing statements in the IMS to the PEAC National Secretary is, is on December 9, 2022. So even the region has their deadline. Uh, it has to be submitted to us and the National Secretary on December 9. And the deadline for submission of the National Secretariat no, to DEP and PMO is on December 15, 2022. For the teacher salary subsidy, the start of creating PSS billing statements in school year 2022-23 is on February 1, 2023. And the deadline is on March 31, 2023. Okay. In case you uh, were you you were you build an ESC grantee. Who did not, for example, stay in, the, uh, stay in your school for 30 days, you know, and or you erroneously build an, e, an ES grantee. You know, uh, the following are the steps to process in, in the processing of your of, of ESC and TSS refunds. The school just sent to the National Secretariat a bank check payable to the Department of Education, OSEC, and, and a letter explaining the reason for the refund. You're required to attach a payment refund form, which is downloadable in the IMS, and ensure that the check is dated within 30 days from the submission of the letter of refund. Now you submit these documents to the National Secretariat, okay? Work to the regional, not to the central office, not even to uh, the to BARM, you know, because uh, definitely it will be forwarded to us 
to the National Secretariat for Review and Processing. So to reduce delays or in the processing, just submit it directly, submit the refund directly to the PAC National Secretariat. Also, uh, may we remind all of the schools no, uh, of the payment refund form. <clears throat> Uh, you are required to attach a copy of this. You have to download it in the IMS. Um, um, and then after that, after we review the documents, after the National Secretary reviews the documents, we endorse it to the Deputy PMO and Deputy Central Office releases is the issue, uh, issues the official receipts for clear check refunds and sends this to the PAC National Secretariat for delivery to the school. <clears throat> okay. Uh, my next, uh, the next topic is on monitoring of PSC participates in junior high schools. Uh, the monitoring process for school year 22-23 will mostly be through the monitoring host institutions. No? Mostly because we also plan on conducting a face-to-face -face or a physical headcount in school year 22-23. No, if uh, it's allowed in, in, in some of the areas. Now, the process of uh, yung MHI, uh, this process focuses on alternative monitoring methods such as review of your billing statements and supporting documents, and uh, also requiring the school to bring with them uh, copies of their school documents you know, for checking. This is to ensure that the ESC grantees that you build are really enrolled you know, and are studying in your, in your school. Uh, we will also be conducting a post-billing audit uh, at the end of the school year to check if all billed ESC grantees or VBBs you know, are existing in your school's account in the learner information system of DEPED. This is to ensure that there is a match you know, between your build ESC grantees and your uh, enrolled grantees in the LIS. Now, it is the responsibility of the participating school to ensure that the ESC grantee, in the IMS, matches the student data registered by the school in the LIS. Also, the schools will be made responsible for all discrepancies in the list of build ESC grantees or VPPs. Uh, these are ESC grantees built, but based on the LIS, were not enrolled or is not enrolled in the GASPI participating school. Grantees built, but based on the LIS, have not stayed in the GASPI participating schools for 30 days. Or grantees not qualified to participate in the GASPI program. Okay, for the list of offenses, um, this, uh, the following are the offenses. No? Uh, if you if the school build the following unqualified ESC grantees or BPBs, for, for example, grantees with no documents showing proof of enrollment in the school, grantees who have not reported to the school for at least 30 days from the opening of classes, grantees who are reporting in another campus or delivery mode, grantees who are enrolled in, an, in another GASPE participating school, grantees who do not have documents as regarded by the GAS program, and grantees who are not qualified to participate in the GASP program. For example, foreign students and repeaters. Now for TSS, uh, schools that build teachers who are not qualified to participate in the TSS program, the non-release and or deductions in the TSS payments to TSS recipients. And for other offenses, failure to appear or be part of monitoring activity without any valid reason, Incomplete documents as required by the GASP program. And the above mentioned offenses are without prejudice to the other offenses and corresponding sanctions, as may be provided for in the GASP guidelines and other irrelevant issue, issuances or laws. Now, for sanctions, the sanctions range from written reprimand to revocation or termination from the GASP program. So the sanction will depend on the severity of the offense. Now, for example, 50% of your ESC grantees are unaccounted without any documents no, or found to be not enrolled in your school, then the sanction will probably be termination from the GASP program, from the ESC program. Now, the imposition of the penalty serian is without prejudice to the right of PEAC 
to the Gospel Monitoring Committee to recommend the filing of the appropriate criminal, civil, and or administrative cases against the school, its officers, employees, and all other persons who aided, abetted, and conspired with in committing the offense. So that ends my presentation, uh, but before I go, uh, uh, this is how you access our tutorial videos in our YouTube channel. Uh, just go to youtube.com in the search field and in input private education assistance committee. And once you're in our channel, you'll see that we have playlists. No? So bottom portion of the channel, maybe we have playlists for the IMS, IMS DSS, and the VMS. So the playlist will guide you to the whole process, creating your ESC and DSS billing statements. Also, do not forget to subscribe to our channel so that every time that we have updates, for example, there are new processes or new video, new tutorial videos, you'll be uh, notified by, by YouTube. Okay. Uh, so that ends my presentation for today. Thank you so much for listening. And uh, magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat ulit. Thank you, Rod. May now call Butch Everola, Head of the Information Technology and Information Management Unit to talk about the PAC Enterprise Information System and Data Privacy Protection. Good morning. My task to you is uh, to walk you through the Enterprise Information System and give some reminders on data privacy protection relevant to the processing of billing statements now in the ESC and the TSS programs. Okay. Wait for a second. So let's start. Uh, the PEAC Enterprise Information System integrates all the data processing systems used in the implementation and management of the GASTE programs. And it has the following component systems. First is the certification system, which uh, schools use to update school profiles, submit documents, and uh, to answer the 2018 certification assessment instrument. Then we have the ESC information management system, which you use to process billing statements for the education service contracting and the teacher salary subsidy programs. And then we have the teacher, uh, the training and development system for the use of teachers and administrators participating in our training program. So the system handles registration down to sending or downloading of certificates of attendance and completion with CPD credit units annotation. And we also have the online voucher application portal, which eligible incoming grade 11 students would use to submit applications to the senior high school voucher program. And as a side note, uh, I'd like to mention that uh, the application to the senior high school voucher program is already closed. The application period was from June 29 to July 29, and the results shall be released on August 22. And uh, then we have the senior high school voucher management system, which the schools use in processing billing statements for the senior high school voucher program. We have other systems attached to the EIS, but they are for internal use of the PEAC. And we secure these systems through an annual vulnerability assessment and penetration testing and 24 seven security operations center. And the EIS can be accessed uh, through the URL that you're seeing on the upper uh, left-hand corner of the screen. It's, e, uh, it's e, eis.peac.org.ph. So let's now take a look at the EIS. So when, when you access that uh, URL, you'll, be, um, you'll see this uh, landing page. On the left-hand side, um, you'll see here the panel for new applicants. So it contains all the procedures, all the documents, and uh, whatever you need to accomplish you know, for, to um, proceed with your application. Then on the right-hand side, you'll see here the panel for participating schools. And uh, this includes uh, the newly certified schools. No? So just uh, input your e email or e ESC ID and then your password. And please do not forget to accomplish this CAPTCHA here down in, uh, below the section of the, uh, below the password. So just click uh, the box there and accomplish um, whatever is needed. And then click login. And once you're inside the system, 
or, or your panel, uh, you'll see this page. Okay, so please, um, the first thing you need to check is the upper right-hand corner um, of the screen. No? So you should see there the present school year. If you don't see, um, so when we open the building for um, SY 2023, you should see um, AY 2223 um, on that uh, part of the screen. So if it's not displayed properly, um, you just click the, 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 the arrow button there and um, choose the present school year. The rightmost icon would allow you to uh, change your password or log out of the system. And then uh, on the left hand side, you see there a section where you can upload your um, school logo, if you wish, then your school name and your ESE ID. Okay, it also has the uh, buttons for the account profiles. You can log in and use your management. And then you can also um, uh, just go to the right. There's a button there uh, for you to update your school information if you recently changed your official email address or telephone. So let's go to account profile. So when you click that icon, you'll be taken to this page. On the left-hand side is a navigation bar. You'll see the different parts that you need to fill out. The first um, item there is basic school information. You just provide all the updated information here, and then you click Save. Next is membership in educational associations. Just click whatever applies to your school. If you're not a member of any um, association, don't need to click anything. Then administrators. You should see here the administrators that you inputted last school year. Now that's the lower part of the screen. So if anything needs uh, updating, you just uh, use the icon. So you can delete um, any administrator who is no longer with your school or you can uh, edit their information if they've changed email or telephone number. And for you to add your new administrators, just uh, go to the middle section here. No? So just provide the title, first name, middle name, last name, down to mobile number, and then click the add button. Now we are asking you to provide us you know, your school administrators from the school president down to the senior high school principal. Uh, but uh, you only provide whatever applies to your school. Now, if you don't have, for example, um, a director or directress, then you don't need to, to provide that. But what is required here is the junior high school principal. Okay, you won't be able to proceed if um, you don't indicate um, any junior high school principal. Then the next is school calendar. You just indicate here the first and last days of your classes, and then you can also upload the document. Then click Save. Then school plants and the uh, school plant and institutional resources. Just click, uh, just uh, provide the information needed. Then click save. And lastly, faculty data. Uh, what is um, so uh, grade school and senior high school is optional. Right? Only if you have those um, departments. But uh, what's required is the junior high school, the one with the red asterisk. And once you're done, you just click the back button there, upper left hand corner will be taken back to this main page. And let's go to user management. Uh, this is very important uh, that you uh, update this. So uh, you have here the list of users, not the EIS uh, and the IMS and the uh, certification system. No? And on this column here, you'll see their account status. So in this example, all three users are with active accounts. So if you need to um, edit um, any one of them, just click the manage button, the rightmost part of the screen. So for example, user number two, you need to, to update the information. So just click manage and then provide the updated information. You can even suspend the account but in case the, the, uh, the staff you know, or the administrator is no longer with the school. Probably um, he or she has already resigned or retired or Probably um, you're no longer giving that person authority to access the system. So we can suspend the account. So that's the red button there. Okay. And of course, for any change that you will make, don't forget to click save changes. Oh, you can also update the rules, by the way. So, uh, okay, let's just finish this um, uh, slide. So um, do not forget to save any changes. Okay. Now for the rules, um, you should see there, uh, two, I don't know, two systems that uh, uh, may be accessed by a single user. So it's certification system 
and the ESC IMS. So if you are giving that uh, staff you know, access to both systems, you just click both. Or if it's only one system, just click whatever applies and then you click save changes. Now for a new user, just uh, the same now with the administrators, you just add, uh, just click the add uh, new user button, upper right hand corner, and then provide the information, first name down to mobile number, then you can also indicate the roles that you are, you are giving or the access that you are giving that person. And then you can um, ask the system to automatically generate a temporary password for the user, or you can nominate a temporary password for the user and then click add user, and then you close the page. Okay, so that's how you use the uh, uh, enterprise information system. Now it is crucial for the PAC to partner with the school with the schools in protecting the personal data of the beneficiaries of our programs. To start with, let us consider the volume of personal data that uh, the schools process in the ESC program. So last year, we have about 3,574 participating schools in the ESC. And uh, yeah, in terms of, so sorry. Yeah, in terms of grantees, no? Uh, we have a little over 972,000 grantees whose personal data were processed in the ESC information system. So this translates roughly to about 272 grantees per school on, on the national average. But the numbers vary widely among schools, with some schools having more than 2,000 grantees, while the others with less than 10. And uh, I'd like to show you this uh, graph here. Um, you see here the breakdown of the schools based on the number of ESC grantees. So on the national level, 3% uh, of the schools have more than 1,000 students. Uh, a majority, 60% uh, have 500 to 1,000 students. 11% um, have uh, 100 to 409, uh, sorry, 499 students. And one fourth of the schools now with less than 100 students. Now for the TSS, uh, last year, um, there were 44,270 270 TSS recipients. Okay, and uh, I also broke down the number of the number of schools based on the number of TSS recipients. So that's the graph that we are seeing on the right. So um, one percent they have more than 50 teachers or TSS recipients. Uh, Four percent with 31 to 50. 42%, a big, that's a big number, with uh, 11 to 30 TSS recipients and the majority of 52% with 10 teachers and below. So, um, so 970,000, almost a million, and then almost uh, then 44,000. So that's a number of data subjects um, whose personal data we are uh, processing you know, in, the TS, in the ESC and TSS programs. So, ano ba yung mga examples ng mga data na na pinaprocess natin tungkol sa nila. Okay. Under the Data Privacy Act, no, personal data is classified either as personal information or sensitive personal information. And this distinction would prove significant, especially when we get into the discussion of legitimate processing, associated risks, and of course the penalties now when there's violation. Okay, so let's take a look at personal information first. That's under Section 3 of the Data Privacy Act. Okay, So personal information is any information, whether recorded or not, that can, that can identify an individual or whose identity can be reasonably ascertained or when put together with other information would directly and certainly identify an individual. So examples, so there's, uh, there's no enumeration here. No? Para may description lang ang batas natin what's considered personal information. So from the description, you can deduce uh, this includes uh, the name of, of the person, uh, for example, for, for teachers, it would be the school where they are teaching, possible then the subjects that they are teaching, uh, their email, their mobile number, etc. Okay. The second type of personal data is sensitive personal information. And for this, the law has an exclusive list of what's considered a sensitive personal information. So uh, it's sabi ng batas, it, it's any information that reveals the race, ethnic origin, the color of an individual, 
age, marital status, age and marital status, and then religious, philosophical, and political affiliation. That's why uh, pwede natin masabi na ang picture would be considered sensitive personal information because it could reveal your ethnic origin. It could reveal your color and your race. No? Uh, pati age means no, na-reveal ng pictures. <laughs> And then um, any information also that concerns the health of an individual, the education of an individual, his or her genetic or sexual life, um, proceedings for any offense, no? it, its disposal, and then sentence of court arising some, from such proceeding. So you'll see here, education no? is uh, considered sensitive personal information. So we don't just uh, publish the names of our students no, on social media. Um, especially in grades also no tapos naka public pa yung page ng school no minsan uh, uh, that's all already that might constitute a violation no? pero syempre depende pa rin sa circumstances no depende rin sa policy ng school at depende rin kung informed yung mga mang manggulang na ipo-post yun no that's the way of that's the school's um, way you know of of publishing the results tapos may policy din ba ang school na pwedeng mag, uh, mag-refuse no? na i-publish yung, yung pangalan ng bata, etc. But of course, that would depend on uh, your school policy and how you communicate with your policies no? to, the, to the parents and the students. And then, though, uh, information issued by government agencies. So this include um, uh, SSS, TIN, Pag-IBIG. Now, for the students, it's uh, their learner reference numbers. For the teachers, it would be um, their license numbers, no? at least for the purpose of processing of the ESC grant and then the TSS subsidy or the, the, the TSS, no? the, the teacher salary subsidy. Um, also includes like uh, yun, yung tax returns, no? previous or current health records of, of the person. No? So for schools also, uh, kaya di ba, uh, hindi na rin, uh, kailangan nyo have all, also a policy no, regarding uh, teachers who leave. No? Kasi di ba, when, they, when teachers leave and then they apply to other schools or other, other organizations, usually nagkoconduct ng mga background checks, yung mga HR. No? So pag may tumawag ba sa school, nagtanong about a teacher was already resigned, do you give out information um, um, readily or immediately? No? Do you have verification uh, uh, systems not to, to verify the information of the caller, etc. Okay, so um, yeah, so yeah, why do we need to protect personal data? Yeah, um, we have. To, I think we need to be reminded. No, na means because during the BC school year, we we have the tendency to forget or take for granted some. Uh, equally important aspects of our day-to-day operations like data privacy protection. First, it is required by law. No? We have RA10173 or the Data Privacy Act of 2012. No? It, the, the DPA covers all processing of, uh, I mean, the DPA covers processing of all types of personal data and also co- um, covers any natural or juridical persons involved in the processing, processing of personal data. No, and clearly, the schools are covered by this law. Um, we need to protect personal data because it builds trust. No? In, the pro- in, pro- in the process of providing educational service, we have to protect the personal data of our stakeholders. And that means our, st- uh, our students, uh, their, their families, no? also the teachers, and then the administrators. If they fail to keep their data safe and private, they could suffer loss, identity theft, and other forms of damage, even bodily harm. And um, if, this happen, if this happens, we could lose their trust. And then that's something that we want to prevent. Then uh, it mitigates risk. You know, keeping the personal data of our stakeholders you know, confidential, accurate, and available prevents or mitigates costly incidents, uh, even damage to our reputation. And of course, we don't want penalties you know, from the government in case there are violations. And for additional guidance, um, because the, the whole discussion about data privacy and how it applies to schools now is very uh, complex. No, it would need uh, more than uh, uh, fifteen minutes not to discuss. And uh, for for additional guidance, I invite you to visit the National Privacy Commission's website. It's privacy.gov.ph. The law, the, the copy of the law is there. 
there's, there's also um, they also have copy of I mean they also provide copies now of um, the implementing rules and regulations. They have their circulars there, and then they have um, advisory opinions, which I think um, is very know, know, instructive, especially to schools. Okay, um, because of when they release advisory opinions, it's about questions no, um, submitted to them. Uh, real world no, by data subjects no, because may like, merong issue na gusto madinawan. Okay? In fact, no, I picked out six that may be um, uh, relevant to schools. No? For example, on March 25, just uh, this year, they released an AO on the recording um, and uploading of online classes on Google Classroom because there's a teacher who brought that question before the uh, National Privacy Commission. No? Kasi sa school daw nila, they are required to record their online classes and to upload a copy of that recording on Google Classroom. No? And ngayon, sina-challenge ng teacher yung legality no? nung, nung, uh, nung recording, nung, nung, nung practice na yan. Nung, uh, ano maganda yung sagot ng National Privacy Commission is very instructive. No? So may, may, may sinasabi doon na uh, na hindi lang consent no? yung um, basis for legitimate processing no? because the schools and then the, the parents or, or, and the students, no, they have a special kind of contract. No? And everything that happens in the school is uh, um, happening within an educational framework. No? On um, no April 2021, naman, there's an AO brought, uh, brought to them. I mean, the, there's an issue. AO that the NPC uh, issued no, on the case brought to them regarding the posting of photos on social media without consent. Like uh, Anina, photos may be considered as um, sensitive personal information. In November 2020, now, there was an AO on common practices of schools and processing the personal data of the students. Because um, this, this was relevant, this is relevant no, because uh, 2020 was the year when most of the schools no, um, shifted to uh online online classes okay and uh, yeah, the deep the, the law protects individuals by mandating personal data collect uh mandating personal data collection uh protection no and sabi ng batas no all those who collect use or process information that relates an individual have to adhere to data privacy principles you have to implement security measures for data protection and of course no, uphold the rights of the data subjects because violations of the law may lead to sanctions including uh, possible criminal penalties and under section 17 and 18 of the implementing rules and regulation sinasabi dito no, na um, processing of personal data shall be allowed no, subject to adherence to these principles transparency no kailangan alam ng data subjects para saan yung pag yung, yung pag process ng personal data from collection until disposal okay um, and dapat alam din ng ng, ng data subject no sino uh, para una para saan yung collection kayo uh, sumunod kayo na siya kayo na siya, kayo na siya is share no kung kung sino share ito ng school sa iba pang uh, institutions Okay, kailangan alam din niya yung mga rights niya as data subject no? and how these rights can be exercised. Okay, and then for legitimate purpose, as I've mentioned, okay, uh, it must be compatible. The purpose of the processing of personal data must be compatible with the declared and specified purpose, which must not be contrary to law, um, morals, or public policy. At may for, 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 the, pers for the two kinds of personal data, no? yung PI at SPI, we have different basis for legitimate uh, processing of personal data. Okay, proportionality just means that uh, the processing of information shall be adequate, relevant, uh, suitable, necessary, and not excessive in relation to a declared and specified purpose. Now, we only collect what's necessary. You know? We only process what is necessary. And then also, and, um, under sections 25 to 29 naman, uh, sabi ng batas, no? um, it, personal information controllers, meaning uh, the schools, no? um, need to implement reasonable and appropriate organizational, physical, and technical security measures for the protection of personal data. Okay? Organizational measures uh, mostly pertains to your policy, no? policies. No? You, have, um, you have a data protection officer. Are you registered with the, with the National Privacy Commission? Okay? Meron ba kayong uh, privacy manual? 
do you have records of processing activities, uh, et cetera? Now, um, additionally, now for the gas pay programs, um, do you have a privacy notice at the point of collection of personal data who are authorized to access the documents in the systems containing personal data? And who decides now who may be given access to those documents? Do you have non disclosure agreements with key personnel no, who handle personal data? No, and do you have a social media policy? Okay. Physical measures, the man. Um, this pertains to access control, physical layout of the workspace, work schedules, handling policies, physical security, just to name a few. So, yung mga ESC grantee folders pa natin, are they kept in a secure place? Are they kept in a secure cabinet? And or in a secure room, no, na merong uh, merong susi. And who has copies of uh, of those of the keys, no, to those cabinets and uh, even the room? Uh, saan ba nakalagay yung mga documents, mga folders niyan? Can anyone just uh, come in ba in, in, in the room and then just uh, live through the documents? Okay. Um, and how do you dispose of hard copies? Okay. Uh, remember that in the law, no, there's a penalty you know, for improper disposal of documents that contain personal data. Technical measures. Um, so this pertains to technical security, the safeguards that you, are, uh, that you have. Uh, measures to ensure the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of personal data. It also involves regular monitoring, periodic evaluation, encryption of your devices, and again, access control. So, yung computers ba natin, um, are they um, secure? Uh, are, do they have passwords? And are these passwords changed regularly? And hindi siya shared with unauthorized persons. May backups ba tayo ng files natin? Uh, just in case, no? di ba yung nangyari sa Recently, sa Comelec, na nasunog yung, yung IT, um, yung, yung floor, no? kung nasan yung IT department. No? So, kung sakaling mangyari yun, wag naman sana. No? We have backups of our files. Nasa cloud ba yan? Madali bang ma-restore? Ma no? um, are your software applications licensed and updated? And do you have trained personnel or third-party providers who secure your network? Uh, lastly, uh, on the slide right now is a statement of representations and warranties which appear before you submit your registration or if you're registering for a training or before you submit your billing statements now when you're processing billing statements. This is a general statement on your responsibilities as a personal information controller and you are holding yourself accountable to compliance with the, with the DPA as regards the processing of personal data. Uh, so please take time to read um, the, these representations and, and warranties. And uh, I think that's it for me. This is my last slide. If you have concerns regarding the handling of your personal data that uh, you have shared with the PEAC, you may message us directly via data.privacy at peac.org.ph. Thank you very much. Thank you to all of our speakers. May we invite them again uh, for the Q&A session. We have here questions, almost similar questions from Dan Oro and Cecilia Matiliano. Um, good morning po. Ask ko lang kung tuloy pa rin ba ang program sa Balik Aral. Yung mga students from public, pwede pa rin maging ESC grantees. And then from Cecilia Matiliano, uh, does this mean that students coming from the public schools who were ESC grantees can now be reinstated? I think Denise shall answer the question. Um, with regard to ano, um, when when we say kasi reinstated, these are students who are ESC grantees na, no? ESC grantees. So if they transfer to another school, uh, whether public or non-ESC participating private school, uh, in school year 2020, 2021, 21, and they'd like to go back to your school, you know, then they may be reinstated as ESC grantees. Uh, don't be confused with uh, students coming from public schools who'd like to transfer to your school in the upper grade levels. Uh, they are, these are not yet ESC grantees. So they have to, uh, we have to wait for DepEd's uh, go signal 
to allow them to participate in the program as new grantees in the upper grade levels. So I hope I answered both questions. Because yun nga yung inaantay, uh, yung application of the same provision uh, last school year, you know, where schools were allowed to accept new grantees in the upper grade levels. Uh, but for this school year, we have to wait for that as good signal, which will, we will be announcing uh, as soon as we get from them. Thank you. From Sister Cleopatra Moreno, uh, a licensed teacher but a graduate of a Bachelor of Elementary Education has a chance to teach in the junior high full time. Is she qualified for the TSS? Uh, yes, if the teacher also teaches ESC grantees, because parang yun ng kulang eh. uh, and one at least one subject load in junior high school. From Catherine Verdon. Uh, we are already re, um, we are already recertified in school year 2021 2022 and we got an overall rating of 3.0 makakakuha po ba kami ng incentive slots this school year uh, the answer really is no because uh, i think um, the kai we used for the certification was the 2018 uh, certification instrument. So, kasi hindi na ginagamit yung previous na kaya. So, if you got a 3.3, you got a rating of 3 in the 2018 kaya, uh, then you do not get any incentive slot allocations. Only those with a rating of 4 in the 2018 kaya will get 30 incentive slots. Uh, question from Rodelisa Jami. Uh, some teachers who are TSS recipients and they have a high faculty rank uh, and receiving higher benefits, will there be a possibility that their TSS will be taxed? Actually, yes. Because eventually the school will compute yung taxes with self for uh, income. Uh, received by the teacher for the whole, whole, whole fiscal year or the taxable year, no? uh, the taxable yung, yung, yung period na yon. And then there is a chance na matax yung school, ay, sorry, yung teacher if the total income exceeds yung minimum uh, na, no, na threshold ng BIR. From Shalma Manding, Paano po yung grantee na nag-transfer sa ibang school within the school year or after the first quarter, automatic na wala na sila sa LIS kasi transfer out na sila? Hindi ba magkakaproblema ang school doon? Uh, transferred out ng first first quarter? Ah, so after quarter. the first quarter. Uh -huh. Kasi meron namang record pa rin yun sa LIS na ang bata eh, na, na pumasok sa school na yun. And then, transfer uh, eventually nag-transfer out nga lang. Uh, makikita naman doon na first quarter nasa inyo. And makikita naman doon yung date kung kailan lumipat or nilipat sa ibang school. So, yun ang tinitingnan namin. If nakapag 30 days ang bata sa school ninyo, eh, allowed naman yun sa guidelines natin na maibil then wala po yung, hindi po yung magiging problema. Magiging problema pa lang, lang po yun kung talagang wala sa LIS yung pangalan ng bata. Sa hindi man lang, wala man lang record na nag-enroll or di ba, nag-transfer out yung bata sa school. Uh, okay. Uh, this one, um, how do we, there's a question on how do we engage our school teachers, our, our teachers for research and data gathering with financial assistance from GASPE? I think for... Um... For research, uh, well, that is if they are doing their thesis and dissertation, it's not from GASPE, but we have the program, uh, the internally funded uh, program that we have. Um, 
that is, is, is that our site? Yes, our I, site. Yes. This is the dissertation writing yeah, assistance. Um, yeah, that's the one that they can um, uh, apply for. Um, though for GASPE currently, uh, um, we do not have an existing program for uh, teachers doing research. Uh, there's another question from Dan Oro, but I guess this is best addressed by DepEd, but uh, just for uh, for the information of her. But sino po magre-release ng budget sa BARM? National pa rin po ba? Kasi nagkaroon ng problema last school year. Di po ba? That remains to be seen. Thank you, sister, for addressing that. <laughs> it remains to be seen. We will answer that. We're waiting for DepEd, yes. DepEd and DBM to discuss that. And then uh, we have a separate, because uh, I only see one more question here in the Q&A panel, but we do have a separate uh, orientation for the voucher program. But I'll just ask it, so probably the school uh, needs uh, an answer right away to this question. Uh, can we accept transferee enrollee for uh, the senior high school voucher? What are the requirements? Yeah, if by transferee, no, it's from grade 11 to grade 12. Um, ang kailangan lang naman doon is oh, certificate from the previous school na voucher program beneficiary yung bata, no? Um, and also, when you encode uh, the name of the grant at uh, the VPB in the system, uh, mata transfer naman ka agad sa ano sa um, sa school niyo. Ang tatandaan lang po kasi palaga is that in transfer in or transferring is only allowed when the grantee complete or mag transfer siya from grade eleven to grade twelve. Okay, hindi siya pwede ng middle of the school year ng grade eleven mag transfer sa grade twelve. Hindi siya um sorry middle of the year the transfer from one uh, voucher participating school to another that's not allowed. What is allowed is yung mag transfer siya after completing grade 11, uh, grade 11. So grade 11 to grade 12. Oh, may pahabol na tanong. Paano po makapag-apply? I guess we need to uh, address this. Apply ang mga teachers sa TSS. Meron po bang specific portal to input and submit their licenses? Um, yes, there is a portal. It's also within the IMS. So as, as presented by Butch a while ago, no, access to the IMS is through the Enterprise Information System. And once you're inside the IMS, there is a link no, that will guide you or that will uh, redirect you to the IMS for TSS. Also, uh, please visit our YouTube channel um, we have a guide, a, a, a tutorial video on how to process your TSS billing statement. It also includes the encoding and uploading of documents for your TSS recipients. So it's all there. I guess uh, another yeah question on INSET. My question for PEC INSET webinar already registered our participant. There is an error in one of our participants but already emailed uh, the correction in the data. Okay, um, if, um, if you've already emailed, um, that will just be responded to. If, uh, it's, if it's uh, taking some time, uh, please contact, um, you may text or call the number of training development unit. Um, it's, a, it's in our Facebook page and also in our website, these contact numbers. Uh, so uh, we can um, uh, respond to you. Um, though if it's uh, in the email, um, uh, that will be responded to as well. Okay, thank you. From Anna Dison Mimba, is it possible to accept students from other ESC participating schools uh, to enroll in, uh, in our school, for example, grade eight? Um, yes, oh, kasi I also read the question. I think the school is a new school, uh, so they have 50, the school has 50 grade 7 slots. Uh, since you're already certified to participate, you may also accept 
transfer yung ESC grantees in the upper grade levels. Uh, it does not affect in any way your total slot allocations in grade 7. So, hindi siya nababawasan. So, if for example, you have two transfer in grantees in grade 8, uh, ESC grantees in grade 8, so you still have 50 slots for grade 7. Um, uh, hindi siya mapit. I'm sorry, Denise. Um, may yes. I just add regarding the the email because um, I would like to advise uh, our teachers um, at the schools as well um, to to send the email if it's for uh, it's if it's for inset. Uh, please use jhs.inset at pac.org.ph for junior high school and for senior high school that's shs.inset at pac.org.ph. Because if you send it to a, a different email other than those, um, it may, may really take time uh, to uh, respond to, especially if you, these are the training emails uh, that we just used to send, the Zoom link, um, which uh, we mentioned uh, in the email, uh, not to respond to that email. Thank you. Okay, thank you. This one, uh, I think uh, this uh, FCT Incorporated, Makai. He may be referring to the certificate uh, certification certificate. Sir, saan po namin madadownload yung certificate kanina? Yun yung tanong niya. Thank you for the, uh, for the question. Um, the certificates will be available for download from your respective EIS accounts at the end of this orientation. Thank you. I would just like to remind the attendees, huh? we have a separate orientation for the voucher program. So we'll accommodate for now, uh, due to the limited time, we'll be accommodating those questions on the ESC and TSS. From Gemma Loy Loy, when po ma -re release um, ESC uh, recertification results uh, in 21-22? We have not yet received uh, our result dahil po hindi po kami nabibigyan ng bagong certificate of government recognition that will bear the correct name of the school. So tama po yung sinabi nung nagtanong ng question that uh, we have to put on hold the release of uh, reports unless uh, we have fully complied yung ating mga documentary requirements. No? That's one of the uh, possible reasons kung bakit uh, we have been keeping on hold some of the reports. But these are available. Uh, in, in one click, we can release the, the report as soon as makumply po yung mga documentary requirements. Thank you. Okay, uh, from Hamdani Sulog, may student po kasi kami nag-transfer 2020-2021 uh, sa other private school, pero ngayon po, 22-23, babalik po siya. Pwede po ba siya ma-enter or ma-include ma ulit sa ESC? Um, yes, so the grantee may be reinstated in the program. Uh, this school year 22-23, you just go to the IMS, no, dun sa uh, service request uh, for uh, service request facility in the IMS to process your reinstated grant. From Grace Tolentino, what if the previous uh, ESC participating school does not want to release the student's ESC ID certificate uh, who wishes to enroll in our school? What is the best thing to do for? Mm -hmm. Uh, you can report it to the regional secretariat sa NDA or to the national secretariat so that we can also check uh, and investigate. No? There may be reason why the, the, ano, the school is not releasing the grantee. No? So we also need the, the ano, we also need the other school to reply or to the, the other schools ano, answer to that question. But we, we, can, ano, we can assist you in, in the process. Another question uh, from SCT Incorporated. Sir, pwede po bang mag-request ng reopening of billing uh, sa IMS ESC ng school year 2021-2022? Uh, for for PEC, you know, the, sa PEC, um, hindi na kami nag ng opening of creation of billing statements for school year 21-22. We may try with DepEd but uh, you'll have a hard time because you're, you'll be required to submit several documents or uh, 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 proof uh, why you were, you were unable, a valid reason why you were unable to create your billing statement for school year 21-22.
Det är central också i Spio. From Salang Gurar, uh, for the 2020-2021 certification code, to whom, to whom do we address our concern regarding the release of the certification result? Good morning, good afternoon. Um, please email us so that uh, we can uh, further look into your uh, situation kung bakit hindi po po na-release yung inyong certification result. Certification email address po. Thank you. Okay. Um, from Shana City Usman, we received two results from the EIS. June 8 and May, May 9, which is the correct result of our e recertification. Um, ganun din po kagaya ng sinagot ko kanina with the previous question. Please uh, email us yun pong inyong na download na reports if they're uh if they are differing in terms of uh, the results reflected so that we can properly advise you. And if there's a need for us to consult with our systems developer, we will para mai ma resolve po natin. Thank you. Okay, I guess we are we're able to address all of the questions here in the Q&A. And with that, we end our Q&A session. We'd like to thank our speakers, as well as Sister Fair for joining the panel earlier. Uh, some reminders, but uh, before that, the participating may have more specific questions that may be addressed uh, by these activities to be conducted by the PEAC, such as the orientation conferences for ESU schools due for recertification and revisit this school year. So that is happening every afternoon after the ESC orientation webinars. We will also have the training for school registrars of GAS participating schools and IMS and VMS point persons from August 24 to August 26. Some announcements or reminder that all webinar recordings and speakers presentations should be uploaded to the PEC YouTube channel and website after the ESC orientation webinars. And lastly, we would like to get your feedback on today's orientation conference. Please accomplish the evaluation form, which you may access via link to be sent to your registered email addresses, or you may scan the QR code that you see on screen. We now end the session with a closing prayer to be led by Dr. Evelyn Doliete. Let us feel God's presence as we offer our closing prayer. Dear God, our Almighty Father, you are the source of our inspiration, our strength, and our everything. We praise you especially today with in grateful acknowledgement for all that have been, for everything that transpired in this gospel orientation. May this opportunity, the updates, the reports we heard will become a springboard for our GASPE participating schools to continue serving their communities, especially the most needy and the least fortunate ones. May our partners, the GASPE participating schools in the BARM region, become more relevant and useful in the attainment of their vision and mission using the subsidy they received from the government through PEAC as the trustee of the fund. All this we pray in the name of our mighty God, amen. Thank you, Dr. Doliete. We are now flashing once again our contact details where you can reach us, the PEC National and Regional Secretariats. Our director is also posted on our website and Facebook page. Thank you and have a pleasant day ahead. <laughs>